Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. The Irish Spaghetti Podcast. Like and subscribe. Please enjoy the show. Separated by birth, they have found each other once more. They will hunt. Tracking game like a Cherokee Indian. No girls allowed. I'm gonna rip your head off and shit down your neck. <laughs> Am I fucking this? No, no. Nah, nah. I can cut anything, dude. This is all gonna be gold. <laughs> you could cancel me out in the background right here, right? Okay, okay. This is fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Irish Spaghetti Podcast. We're your hosts, Billy G, Nikki P, special guests with Johnny T. Nick, how are you? Very well. As always, happy to be back. Bam, baby. Boom. That's always my opening, man. And it's always true. It's yeah. never not true. Yeah. One day he's going to go, I'm pissed off, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I fucking had it. <laughs> <laughs> this nice bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> dude right on man we've been gone a minute we love you guys we're glad to be back man we got a good show planned for you right? episode 34 we had to take a little bit of a break we had some shit going on i went camping so i was off the grid yeah it was very nice very refreshed i'm glad we did that shit i cannot believe you went to a cambodian rainforest just to stay outside a couple of days unbelievable was it right? Weird, right it was yeah it was man. weird Swam with the dolphins in Costa Rica, headed over there. Got Jesus, HIV. Man. Oof. <laughs> oh, you did go to Africa. That's yeah, nice. It's a dude. prerequisite, I believe. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> I think they pre test you for HIV, and yeah. if you don't have it, they don't let you go. <laughs> Do you have anything to declare? AIDS. <laughs> I'm bringing them right back with me, please. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got some stories lined up today. What do we have, actually? Um, I wanted to tell them, Nick. I got a, I got, uh, because we <laughs> rag on things and we try and we always want to keep like a balance, like 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 uh, balance is the word for us. You know, we, we we never want to go too far on either side or any of that crap. Too bad, too good, whatever. We got um, I got a review for white men can't jump, Nick. But you that the original? No, sir. I love the Wait, original. They re, did they remake they it? They remade it. Hulu remade it. Remade the original movie. Yeah. So the source material is the same. It's uh, it's not like a whole different movie. It's a whole different movie, but with the same name. No. What? Yes. No, yeah, same name. Yeah. Same name, but not the same, like, it's not like Billy Ho. Okay. Like, yeah, like, it's that, like, it has nothing to do with it. They didn't, like, try to take. I'm fucking confused. Yeah, they didn't try to take Wesley Snipes' character or um, Woody Harrelson's character and, like, you know, like, revamp them with some younger people. No, it's a whole new story. The whole point's to kind of the, the, the same gist. 
You know, you got these two guys that are kind of hard up on luck. One almost made it to the NBA. One's a good ball player. They kind of notice each other's strengths. Kind of gets hustled at uh, one of the courts. You know what I mean? Right. But um, they also, what they did was, what, what I liked what they did was, is they address it because it's like you watch the old one from the 90s and Woody Harrelson comes to the park all goofy and he hustles the shit out of all these black dudes. Right. And and, and that and, and they never saw him coming. He, he dresses and he goes, he goes, he goes, the reason why I wear this stupid ass. He, remember, do you remember it was like bounce about like that scene? He's like, let me tell you something, Sydney. He goes, he goes, it ain't easy looking this bad. So you see the hat, you see the glass, and you see the goofy. He goes, but you can't tell I'm a ball player. And then switch it takes home the money goodbye thank you was in his head the whole hustler time. bro yeah. hustler so, so wesley snipes saw that hustle in him he's like okay he's like i could use this so they team up you know rosie perez shows a titty out of nowhere in it and then you know Dude, history's she was made. so ghetto she sexy was, oh she was, she was bad. ghetto sexy as fuck do you know what her debut was do you guys remember what her debut was no Dude, um, do the right thing. Spike Lee found her. No shit. She was some bad, um, bad Puerto Rican chick in the hood. And Spike Lee's like, I want her in my movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> and she starts the movie and she's in boxing gloves and she's dancing to Public Enemy because like Public Enemy is like huge in the early 90s. Right. And she's sitting there dancing and stuff like that. And she plays Mookie's girlfriend. She plays his girlfriend in the movie. And dude, um... Give it up to Rosie Perez. She's good. She's I good. like her. There's a there's a certain like really um like capturing thing that with her like when you it's the way you she gotta talks listen. Too. Yeah, that voice. I yeah, I liked her in up in Pineapple Express. Yes, dude. She all those years later, all those years yeah. later, she still got talent. Yes, yeah, so I. I yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, so when in the movie in White Man Can't Jump, um, when she goes to Sydney's house, she knocks on the door and his old lady answers. Rosie Perez has her arm up like this and she's wearing a muscle shirt and it's like, dude, this. Yes, that was not written in, dude. They didn't say they no no director was like, hey Rosie, show them titties, yeah. You know what I mean? She went in there, she had her titty hanging out, she knew that thing was hanging out, and like a professional, she went on and did it, and it was like movie like magic. Like so her titty was like the Leonardo DiCaprio's bloody hand in Django. Yeah, or like it just happened and they were like, just roll with it. Just dude. roll with Let it. it he looks at it and yeah. Or like uh in Serpico when Al or I think it was Santa with a woman when he's walking across the street and he slams the taxi, he goes, I'm walking here when the dude's honking. <laughs> Yes. That was not written in, dude. That was some New York cab driver honking because they're filming a movie and there's traffic everywhere. And, and and he wanted him to hurry up and he just smashes it, dude. And the award for best supporting actress goes to Rosie Perez's titty. Dude, God bless him, dude. <laughs> they hand out a double award that year. Yeah, it's, even the trophy's just titty shaped. I couldn't have done it without these pennies. Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't that right? Isn't I like that good, how, Rosie? She, how you made her Mike Tyson. I, dude, they sound the same. And they both hung out with Spike Lee a lot it was so weird dude it was so freaking weird but you know who plays um you know who plays the white guy in it this time is uh jack harlow dude i, I like the kid dude, dude he is amazing um he is a true talent he is a showman his music Did he play obviously woody harrelson's character exactly basically yeah and um and he and he and, and he made it his own dude and he did a wonderful job and it's like man it's like Dude, that guy came out of fucking nowhere. Out of nowhere. He like, did the little Nas X song, Industry yeah. Baby. Yeah, yeah, I like that song. It's but I'm a just great saying, song. before he was, he was just like, there was no him being underground and then slowly making yeah. it. He was just there and popular. Him I don't and, remember uh, Buzz. No, no, no. Yeah, him yeah. and G Easy was the same way. That yeah. motherfucker was just on the scene one day. Um, You know what did that? You know what opened those doors? SoundCloud. No shit. And SoundCloud opened up those doors because now it's like you got Twitter for rappers. So you could promote yourself exactly, independently dude. instead of having- They were getting signed left and right, these SoundCloud rappers. So Jack Harlow had a SoundCloud. Same with G-Eazy. It's yeah. like, dude, but me and you, that that ain't our world. We're not on SoundCloud. No, but it's still like that. interesting. But, but it is interesting because it's like, you remember, you know, you'd get a feature like Tupac got a feature with Digital Underground. He comes out and it's like, you listen to that song, Nothing But Trouble, and it was that soundtrack with that movie. Remember John Candy was the cop? Remember oh, Nothing yes, but Trouble? yes. Yeah, that's, Tupac was in that movie. That's the first time. Tupac was not a star when he was in that no movie. Shit. Yes, he was nobody. It was Digital Underground, and that's who they invited on the set. So you're listening to this song, and you got Humpty Dumpty out there doing his thing. And then all of a sudden, Tupac <laughs> comes up, and it, like the bass was going, you heard the, like, the, the organ. It's like, and Tupac comes out, and he starts rapping, and you look at him, and you're like, that was really good. Like, there's like, something who, about this guy. Yeah, who is this Immediately guy? Immediately, you like, just Like, you understand. can always tell, like, there's a difference of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, there's, yeah. there's levels to, the, to, to, to you know, talent, and, and, and that's what you saw. So you're like, dude, like, like hold on, who's that guy? So everybody's like, who's that guy? Who's that guy? And then Tupac came out and just, and became Tupac. 
It's no unreal. shit. Unreal. Yeah. He was unreal, man. We'll never get another him. Just like um, No, dude. Him and Biggie. Yeah. Like you could call All those old school guys are the best. Well, I mean, like, even like like um and and I know we disagree on on, you know, we both can see his talent mm-hmm. and we could but but I could tell you it's like like celebrity status and stuff like that. Kids today will never have another Michael Jackson. No. They will oh, they no. will they will never know what it feels like where you're watching Grown people and younger people faint when generational he fame. Exactly. Like he transcended his own generation. He was famous till the day he died. He never became irrelevant. Exactly. Um, Michael Jordan, same way. Well, the kids will never have that. Like, 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 I, I, to see such a performer, you know, mm-hmm. I mean? like, like LeBron James is like, they say he's like up there, one of the greatest basketball players ever and stuff like that. But he's so unlikable too. Is he? Like Michael Jordan is all basketball. about ball. Yeah. Listen, and, and I don't want to, you know what I mean? But I kind of, I kind of like hearing stuff like that. I, I have, you know, an interest in these mega celebrities mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I'll look but into it. But there's like Michael Jackson's the type of famous where you can go to like a village in Guam yeah. and say his name and they'll be like, blah, 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 Michael Jackson. Yes. <laughs> like they'll fucking know. In, in China, in the eighties, they said no, none of them were speaking English, right? Mm-hmm. But you could go to any village. And like you said, some village in Guam or something, yeah. you go to any village city or whatever in China and they recognize two Two things, Coca Cola mm-hmm. and Michael Jackson, and also Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was is he that one of famous, those dude. He's famous yeah. everywhere, and uh, Muhammad Ali is probably the most famous person that ever existed. Yeah, like his name carried throughout yeah. the entire world. Yeah, there's you nowhere know? you can go where someone doesn't know his name. Uh, I I started the chant. Um, I was eating uh, bumblebee tuna from an African market, and I was out there to see Thrill in Manila, and I'm sitting there, and I got it opening <laughs> up, and I went, and I went, I went, um, and the guy goes, do you want chicken of the sea? And I go, Ali! Boom, 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 bye, uh, Ali! Ali! Boom, yeah. bye, and, and I started that chant. The kids, kids are falling, I'm doing and stuff like that. I don't get the credit, though. What am I gonna do? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a made-up story. You're just timeless. You don't fucking age. <laughs> just a man in history. I'm in You're pictures with, this, yeah, with the same shirt. You I'm were older pictures. back then yeah. than you are now. <laughs> somehow. Oh, dude, that's so funny. You ever see that, um, you ever see that picture that was taken in like the 50s and some dude was wearing like designer sunglasses? Mm. You never seen that picture? Mm. Like, listen, it's bullshit because time travel is bullshit. But it's kind of weird to, you know what I mean? It's like, interesting. It's fun to talk about. I, dude, honestly, um, look it up and next time let's discuss it and stuff like that. You tell me what you think about like the authenticity of the picture. It's like, and it's like you. I mean, it's obviously an old picture taken forever. But it's like I don't know. This is right but what do around you mean like, by designer glasses. Like the like, brand was something that only existed in the last forty years or some listen, shit. Or? When I when I say designer, I I, I might just mean modern because they had designer shit it was just no but like like straight up oakley's bro okay like oakley's standing next to some guy you know like uh this the the combustion engine not you know right. what i mean like right. like this picture was like forever ago and he had modern sunglasses on and um i don't know man, like maybe some guy thought it looked cool and like cut him out or something like that and then he seemed like kind of normal dress and it's like and, and i guess they were testing the authenticity of the picture and stuff like that and i don't know dude like what you know that's I, dumb you know, I'm, I'm sorry. In a million I can't get years from now, shit. I believe it. If he was holding an iPhone, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he was like fucking well, looking up YouTube videos, but I, here's the thing: I'm even exist. I'm never gonna believe it because it's some modern dude sitting in some old picture, and I don't believe in time travel. But what if, like, um, what if they like? You know, I'm gonna say tachyons because I only know it from movies. What if they like tachyons? Yeah, yes. tachyons. Yes. Like, what if they get the tachyon to work and like can go in time? You know what I mean? Tachyons are particles on the quantum mechanics scale that literally travel through time. And and are they real? Yes. Okay, so they're a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, can you? Um, I don't know if we can manipulate them. We just know that they exist. Uh, can you farm them? Can you get them? That's like- where I'm not sure. I yeah. don't really know. I, I bought a book on quantum mechanics. I was actually reading it at a uh, burger brasserie when I was waiting for my like tips. Stephen a lot. Hawking or something yeah. like that. No, yeah. no, it was just a, like an introductory book on quantum mechanics. It was very interesting. It was talking about stuff like that. Tachyons. Mm, tachyons. Yeah. That reminds me of, uh, they bring it up in Watchmen. Dr. Manhattan, he's like, I can't see my own future. And she's like, why? He's like, probably a burst of tachyons going back through time from nuclear war that's blocking my but vision. But meanwhile, it was uh, the smartest man the on The smartest world. man on earth. Blocking um, him out. Ozymandias. Yeah. Ozymandias. Oh, dude, yeah, Adrian, yeah, yes, yeah, dude. Yeah. He was my favorite in the movie. That he shit was, was dope. Mine too. Mine him, too. him and the comedian. You know why, dude? I love yeah. the comedian. I, I, um, I, in order, I'd say uh, him, uh, Rorschach, and then the comedian. See, I got... 
I got him. I got the comedian. Dude, I do like Rorschach a lot, actually. I, I'd have to put... You know what? I'll get, same Gangster. order. Gangster, yeah. yeah Boom, you're you're selling me on that. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. And he was um, dope. What do you call it, though? Uh, uh, I was just about to say something about the tachyons and stuff like that. But, um, uh, oh, Adrian. Adrian, the reason why I like him so much is because he did shit that had to be done. Yes. He made the hard decision. Yes. He killed a lot of people. He killed... Thousands he wasn't of people a villain. to save millions. He wasn't yeah. a villain. I, I'm so tired. It's like, dude, the, the, the hard genius. choice doesn't always make you the bad guy. His sacrifice was ridiculous. Exactly. But if you actually watch the movie at the very end, Rorschach had his diary yeah. where he actually talked about everything that happened. You know, like the mystery was revealed in the diary. And at the very end, the guy in the news station, they're like, it's a slow news day. We have nothing to run. Just do a puff piece or whatever. And he got and he it grabs out. the journal. So basically all that was for nothing. Because he was about to run that shit in the newspaper at the very end. Wow. Yeah, man. I didn't yeah. see that, dude. Yeah, so hundreds of millions of people just got killed for no fucking reason. Good. I'm kind of glad. That was a good movie, time. though. <laughs> Nixon's fourth term. <laughs> and he's trying to, like, you know, slow things down with Russia. Dr. Manhattan's uh, <laughs> glow-in-the-dark dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone had a computer design that dick. Dude, yeah, like on uh, that reminds yeah, me of Rick and, Rick and Morty, Morty, right? Yeah, he's like Kevin wanted to do it. <laughs> Kevin, <had> it. <laughs> he, he fought sell. real hard for that project. <laughs> he's gonna never live this down. Um, <laughs> Kevin, remember when he was had like the thing, and then she's like, re- he's like really going to town. I obviously could do like a million things. There was like three. Oh, when he had three of him, yeah, just like, like finger going, banging her and doing all that, yeah. all everything really nasty stuff. And she like looks out the corner of her eye. He's just in his little workroom, like working on something. <laughs> he's just doing science. Yes, he cared nothing about. He's like, that. my full attention was on you. It's like, was it? Yeah, really? was it, Doctor Manhattan? Yeah. It's how you're over here <laughs> being a scientist and banging me out in there. You know what I mean? She was hot too. I like that shit. I don't like her, Malin Ackerman. I'm not a big fan. She has a weird shaped head. Her head looks like a fucking motorcycle helmet. You know what? I like? I liked her mom, but the younger version. Yes. She was, I think that's who I like. She liked. was beautiful. Yes. Whoever that actress like, is to play Eddie, the younger version, she was gorgeous. You knew I was changing in here. He's like, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. like, you don't dress like that for no reason. That exactly. movie's good, dude. Dude, and you know what's funny? When he threw her against the table to <laughs> brutally rape her, he made a shot. One of the pool balls <laughs> went in the pocket. Why did that need to happen? Eight ball, corner pocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she calls it. He's like, he's like, he's like, my cock in your hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. In your burst and hot bucket. My face. Yeah. Oh my God. What a movie. Eddie, you will remember my country. Yes, you remember. She scratched him with a bottle, dude. Oh. Um, Good movie. All right. And you know how we always find, like, why did they do that in movies? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Sir. What did you think was going to. I, I, we talked about this. She took a, a blade. Right, she had it on her, so obviously well, she she's took like, a bottle. Yeah, oh she yeah, broke a bottle and then slashed. His okay, face. so she intended it, on her. He looked at her, or whatever. She's like, "We need to talk about this baby now that the war's over." And yeah. he's like, "Get the fuck out of I'm here!" I'm out of like, here, he just, shithole little country. Yeah, right? he was. Yeah. He laughed at her. He's like, "Just get the fuck out of here!" And she was like, "You will remember my country." And then she fucking smashes the bottle and cuts him in the face. Okay, but here's the thing. Okay, all right. So like, you know that the guy next to him is basically a god, and then you know <laughs> him. He's like super soldier. Like yeah. he was basically a morbid Captain America, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, because yeah. he was in there with the flamethrower and you saw it, right? Okay. Bad motherfucker. What did you think he was going to, how did you think he was going to react opening up his face 10 inches with a, with a dirty sure bottle? I'm she didn't know his personality very okay, well. Okay, I'm sorry, Eddie. I'll leave now. Thank you. Bye. Because he was also super charming when he wanted to be. Yeah. So she probably got him when he was like, you know, just partying in a good mood. She didn't know he was a sociopath. And she had to, re- and and you know, oh wait, he killed her. Do you remember when he's walking in slow motion? He's got the flamethrower and he lights his cigar with it, and he lights the, the the dude on fire, and he just starts smiling. Why didn't he do this? Like okay. he was having a good time. Oh with yeah, it. or no, my favorite is when he jumps down to the. That's one of my favorites. And he's got the bean bag. Yes, and he's no, he's got the, oh, it was it. like smoke grenades. He's like pelting him with. Here's what Doctor Manhattan should have done. All right, you stand with me because now we're just going off. Right, let's here's do it. What, yeah, Fuck here's it. what Doctor Manhattan should have done. Okay? Part of the show when she said. Eddie, you will remember this baby. Dr. Manhattan should have put his hand on her stomach, performed the cleanest abortion you've ever seen in your <laughs> life, where it's like, mm-hmm, right? Well, that's like turned it into snow or like gas. That's what he says to him. You know him. what I mean? Well, he said the bullet. The comedian was like, you could have turned the, the gun into fucking snow or the bullets into steam. He's like, but you didn't die. Turn the baby into <laughs> smoke. Not a baby. Yeah, go <laughs> and go, all right, you're done. Don't worry. You need you don't need to worry about him anymore. You don't need, like, couldn't he have done that? He didn't care about people. He murdered. It's on the right side. No, it isn't. 
It's not? Nah, it's Billy drops it. his phone once, once an a show. episode. Yes. Once or twice. It's under I'm going to get like side. a net. I know. What am I doing, dude? Adderall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just call it all, out. All, all that Adderall. I can't focus you on holding my fuck. phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? The, 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 As I'm talking, he's just like. <laughs> no, the cocaine. The cocaine. When we did Johnny. the coke episode, I was like this. We never did a coke episode. I, yeah. Well, no, I was drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm a jittery guy as it is, so it makes it always so much worse. <laughs> the original Coke. Oh, that's what we were going for. <laughs> we took that challenge for sure. I yeah. I, I, dude, I'd like to just taste it. I mean, I'm sure you could order cans and stuff. Yeah, man, I'm sure it's online somewhere. You know? Oh. I forgot what it was. I think originally it was meant to be like a headache cure. Oh, so it wasn't, like a, it wasn't a refreshing drink? No, always? no. Was it really? Yeah, it was like a headache cure. It was supposed to be medicine. It was made stuff for the stupidest reasons back then. Like uh, Jägermeister, it was also a medicine. You know what was I mean? Was it really? Yeah, that's why it tastes like that's terrible. Castor oil. Well, I wanted to tell you guys about white men can't jump. Listen, man, I I want to I want to give credit when credit's due. I was not expecting that movie All right, to be so good. Yeah, you would recommend it? No doubt. Scale of one to ten. Six. Six. Yes. Pretty decent. That's pretty good. That's a good movie. Is it just like an entertaining film? Is it more of a drama? Is it like comedy based? What, what style? Would comedy, you put it? but you know how every- the first one was mostly comedy. It yeah, like a feel good comedy. But but there was a lot of real moments in the first one too. Um, everything has to be miserable these days. So there was a lot of depressing shit in it. But they I had was comedy just element. Talking about Jack that. Holler. Yeah, look at the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was just talking about that. We watched The Martian. I told you I was going to watch yeah, it. Yeah. And one of the things that I really liked about it was that they didn't make it overly depressing. Yeah. And overly serious. Like he had a sense of humor about him and he was like charming and fun. Mm-hmm. And you don't like see that kind of shit anymore. Everything has to be so dark and serious and just just brutal, really. Did Will Smith and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air originally, you saw the, the basketball hit the guy in the head. They all stand up and he like just spins him and he's like I got one little fun my mom got scared and the, uh, now the new one it's like Will and there's like a gunshot and like some kid hits the ground and Will and, and, the, and the new Fresh Prince is all scared and he goes out there and like Carlton's all serious and the dad and there's like one joke per episode it's like why dude? still watch a, that? It was a, dude, it was a fun sitcom. I don't want to watch a serious version of a comedy sitcom. That'd be like a dark Seinfeld. Dude, and again, dude, <laughs> why dude, would you watch that just, shit? Dude, just like that's we, garbage. Yeah, just like we how we talk about how they perpetrate everything. Dude, honestly, man, people are funny right now. There's a lot of fun in life right now. Like, there's no reason why everything needs to be so grim all the no. time, right? And not everything has to be a message or a movement. Yes. Can't we just have good old-fashioned fun? When did that start, bro? When did it start? Do you think it started? Can I tell you when I when I think it started? Okay, so do you remember the first few comic book movies were still fun? Yeah. When those got dark, it seemed like people, they, they were like, oh, people like this. Like like the, the Dark Knight, like Batman and stuff That's like that. That's what set it off. Dude, I think so. Because it's like But people got the wrong there. idea. Yeah. They, they just thought that dark means good. Yes. It's only good. Good when it's good, dude. It's it's good when it's necessary. Yes. Like we wanted a superhero movie where like people were dying and really, and there was like real villains with evil, evil things. Like that's fun to us. Like 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 I promise you, it's like the young kids can't don't care about Batman. It's gonna be adults buying these tickets. Mm-hmm. Okay, so make it adult. Good, you know what I mean? Beautiful. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, dude. I remember laughing at it. I'd like to laugh at dude, it again. That There's show no problem was with that. hysterical. Yeah. And Will Smith was one of the funniest people on earth at the time. Uh-huh. He was hilarious. What a remarkable talent. It's a shame to see what happens to these guys over time. And, and again, he was like jovial and fun and yeah. just witty and clever and interesting, good energy. Everything's all serious now. Uh, You're uh, right. Yeah. But his family, dude, those loons. I don't think you could have that much fun with that loony family. Fair like, enough. Like his kids are so far gone. Do you know that there's a picture of everybody in that family posting themselves crying on Instagram? Why? Why? Why thanks is for, your family so for, weird? For bringing your family horseshit into my life, brighten my day. Yeah. Tell me a knock knock joke. Good, and, and not oh, only that, dude. it's like it's like. Dude, oh, I'm sorry, you're so rich that's, and famous. Dude, exactly. And everything is fine, <laughs> dude. Wah. Dude, if I put Wah. a picture of me crying on Instagram, I don't even need a caption. They go, yeah, we get it. Uh, him there, he has to put some like long thing. Jaden, where are Jaden? Yeah, he wears oh, a dress, I saw that. and then Willow wears suits. 
And it's like they got, they're so dude, Hollywood, it's sick. Dude. Guess what? Here's my hot take. Who gives a Who cares about shit? the Smiths? Who cares? Who cares about Wear them? your dress, wear your suit, stop talking about it. They're only doing it for attention. It's a clear ploy. It's disgusting. Just ignore it. This is how you beat the shit. You beat it by not talking about it. nothing, yeah. You beat it by just literally dismissing it. That's yeah. how you beat it. It's like that kid in school that's always trying to get an attention, like shoving a pencil up his ass. You're like, oh, he's a weirdo, and you just walk away, and then all of a sudden there's no audience, and he just sits there. And just gets yeah. weird. And then he has stop to- giving it. It works. They they thrive on the negative energy as much as the positive. So any attention is they're winning. And then the kid just- has to go. He has to go to where that sink is, where you make like the <laughs> ashtrays out of clay and stuff. And there, all the stuff is drying, and he has to rinse the pencil off in the sink. <laughs> I'm sorry, though, but can I tell you something? Let me let me tell you something, dude. Okay. Kids that did crazy stuff in school because I didn't do my schoolwork, they got me through, dude. You know what I mean? Like, well, the, it was entertaining. The kid that would fight with the team, yeah, exactly. I I always told my daughter, I said, listen, there's gonna be a kid that fights with the teacher and, and goes off and stuff like that. It's okay to appreciate that kid. Don't ever be him. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, I promise you, when the door shuts and the class isn't paying attention anymore and he's sitting out in the hallway and and, and, and now they got to call his mom and it's real depressing and stuff like that, you don't want to be that. But it's okay to, like, get a kick out of it. But it, people you know. who are like that are damaged and they're mm-hmm. deeply unfulfilled and they have a yeah. lot of pain in their souls. Yeah. That's what it is. But the thing is, you can't feed it. Like, if you feed it, it just grows bigger and bigger. It just makes it worse and when worse. When the class, like, eggs it on and yeah, stuff man. like that. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like a, like Charlie Zelenoff, we always talk about. He goes to the boxing gyms and he just trolls professional boxers yeah. and he tries to fight him and he tries to sucker punch him and he gets his ass beat and everyone's like laughing like they hate this guy I see someone who has like a mental illness and like a deep dark yeah. pain inside of him and you can expl- you don't go yeah. there and try to get your ass kicked and try to get that attention if there's not something wrong with you man I don't, it's not yeah. for entertainment I don't like that people listen I, you're it's, validating it's, it's him it's entertaining but I don't like when people are like um, I'm a bus I'm a fine child I'm a bus it's like it's like listen do, do you see what you're doing? Might you're, as well beat up a yeah, crazy your, homeless guy. Yeah, your pursuit for a whack job. Why yeah. don't you maybe like, you saw, dude, there was good people calling the cops on Charlie and telling them, listen, you got a problem on your hands. This dude's going to wind up hurting somebody. Mm-hmm. He's very violent or he's going to wind up getting murdered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you, you know, and people are doing that. And, 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 and he wind up getting the help he needs. He's off the internet now, dude. He's on all sorts of meds now. They got him like kind of like. That's know, what I'm there. saying. Like, you're it's beating up a that, mentally unstable exactly. person. Exactly. Jail it's was not... the best thing that ever happened to Charlie. I remember the creep. I didn't know thing. he went to jail. Yeah, he went to jail. What for did he get minute. arrested for? Uh, I don't know, like stalking or something like that. Something fucked up. Yeah, something yeah. weird. You something know? weird. The funniest thing though, dude, the best thing that Charlie Zelenoff, my favorite Charlie Zelenoff moment ever. Like everybody's gonna say, uh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. Uh, uh, um, uh, what's Deontay his name? Wilder. Deontay Wilder. They're gonna say that. My favorite uh, uh, Charlie Zelenoff moment is when he's like. Kim, because he thought Kim Kardashian, he thought he was, she was, she liked him. They were dating, and he picks up these dollar store red pumps, and he goes, "How about you shoes? These are shoes from Paris. I bought you shoes." And he's dead serious. He's dead serious. And I'm looking at those dirty shoes, and I'm thinking, whose porch did he steal those off of? Number one, <laughs> number two. Could you imagine Kim Kardashian? The chill if she's seen this either that went up her spine, where it's some dudes like. I got I got these shoes for you, baby. And and dude, you know he's like a known violent person, <laughs> dude. Seriously, he, he hands her the shoes, and then when she turns around, he sucker punches her <laughs> across the oh, cheek. Yeah, dude, <laughs> like and, he does. It's just because that's Charlie. <gasps> he can't um, help it, dude. Uh, uh, no, he beat up his mom or dad. He threatened them, and that's when he went to jail. No shit. Yeah, he's also a piece of shit. His dad's this tall, dude. But his dad. Man, but I guarantee you they did a number on him. I'm sure there's mental illness. I'm sure there's a dude, lot of components. They're, they're Russian immigrants that came from like this tiny little communist hellhole on earth, like from Siberia or something like that, and made it to Los Angeles to give him a better life. And they got the real old way. Like, like, dude, her, his mom is literally like, like you're like, <laughs> like, uh, what do you call it? Stereotypical like Russian mother. Yeah. Dude. Like, 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 what do you mean? Come back here, it's Charlie. Come, you know, like bad. You know? Right. And um, dude, his dad, he's in the gym with him and these dudes are trying to jump Charlie and he's like he's like you stay away from my son you remember and it's like dude it's like these are just these two immigrant parents doing everything first first generation immigrant parents doing everything they can for their whack job son and I just felt bad for them what they if, just look tired what if Russia negotiates to have him released and then they send him to Ukraine 
and he's just running through and Ukraine, just wins. trying to sucker punch and he, people. Yeah, and he turns the t- or no, he and, 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 he's just punching a tank. Yeah, he gets a hold of uh, of what's his name? Who's the who's the Ukrainian that one dude? The their president, but he's. Uh, Vitowski, what's that dude's name? The president? Yes, he was on oh, the sitcom out name, there. Man. Yeah, his name. dude, wouldn't it be funny if he got a hold of him somehow? He's like dressed as like some milkmaid, like in <laughs> Russia, and just turns around and just clocks him and gets a good one off on him, like the best punch Charlie Zalanoff has ever thrown. Um, do you think? Um, do you think he had any technique? Do you think like after? Yes. Yeah. Right, like after sitting in that for in a that normal dirty guy, little like, apartment, let's put punching it this that way. thing so many times, you get if, power. If right? you went to high school with him, he could probably scrap. Yeah, he just he was in there with professional fighters. Of course, he's gonna get his ass whooped. Uh-huh. But yeah. yeah, yeah, he had some skills. Yeah, for what he is, I mean, no, no world class talent, but he knew how to throw his hands. He knew how to move a little bit. Like, yeah, he had grit. Obviously, he was retarded, so he can take a punch. Yeah, <laughs> I I noticed that um when they it, he would instantly know if they had skill or not. Like I remember he um when he'd sucker punch a guy, they'd always take their gems. Just like one forty six and oh, and he would like call it a win. I I loved it, right? But um my dude, it was just so wacky that it was funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I remember one time he dude he just like. Dude has his glove. Dude, his glove wasn't even past his thumb yet. The dude's like sliding his glove off of Charlie. Bam! And hits him one. And the dude went down like this, rolls it with his shoulder, right? And he goes, all right, all right. And he puts his thing on and he starts and he gets up. And I saw it in Charlie's face. Charlie knew that he had a real fighter in his mm-hmm. hand. And he runs away, takes off the gloves. And he I've goes, seen this he goes one. I won. I won. I hit you. I won. And it's like, Dude, ah. one of the best ones was he did that to a, I think he was a heavyweight or like a cruiserweight. Yeah. And he's, he's a black dude and dope as shit. I know, shit. in that gym. Do you remember they got mm-hmm. out of the ring and Charlie was like done? Chased him and, and beat he his chased, ass. But he also, he started body slamming uh-huh. him and wrestling him. He was like beating the fuck out of him basically. Because the, because the world, I'm sorry, the world, Charlie Zelenoff needed a world class ass whipping. They should have let him get whooped worse. Honestly. Yeah. But he, also, again, like he's mentally ill. He should have been knocked out. And I think he would have kind of like hung up the gloves. But dude, he was slipping Deontay Wilder. Yeah. It was the weird thing. Like I've never seen him just Deontay like Wilder, folded in half, dude, like an though, envelope. Yeah. But even though Deontay Wilder like beat him up or whatever, he gave he him a break. Back. Oh, yeah. A dude. lot. If Deontay Wilder really want, dude, I've seen him put the lights out on professional heavyweights with one shot. Charlie Zonoff couldn't have taken that beating if he really let go. I, he, was, I, he was more trying to scare the shit out dude, of him. Yeah, that was his whole point was like, dude, you, you gonna stop calling my daughter? You can stop. Um, it was so funny. Charlie Zanoff ran like you saw, and when I say twenty feet, I don't mean like in measurement. I mean he took twenty footsteps running, <laughs> and it's so funny because like Deontay Wilder like like pivots his foot, he leans back on one foot, then puts his foot here, and he's right in front of him. <laughs> Yes, he Did you remember him. that? Yes. Dude, he's right in front of him. He took two steps to his he 20 was, and he's just in he front of him. He was on his knees, bent over in the fetal position, and Daniel was just standing over him, Doom. just clipping him. And you know what, dude? Like, honestly, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like he held back, but how bad do you think those hurt? I'm sure it hurt like, a lot. He probably shook up his whole inside. I don't and think stuff, Deontay you know? Wilder can throw a weak punch if he wanted no, to. No, no. There's just nothing behind that. Dude, I'd be scared to fist bump him because I might have end up in the hospital or something like that. You know what I mean? Just anything, dude. He's a monster, bro. Gosh, man. <laughs> just fist bump him, you explode. Um, oh my god, I actually had a another fight talk that I wanted to talk to you about, but uh we wouldn't put it on there anyways. But uh so uh oh no, Tyson Fury, yes. Tyson Fury, buddy. Tyson Fury. Yes. One of my favorites, man, but I'm a little bit uh I'm upset about this one. Be- because it's just it's ludicrous to, that he believes that he would have any chance on earth. And it's cool. He's he doesn't a, believe that. Yeah, yeah. He's do you, you think he's just smoke and mirrors, buddy? No, what I think happened was I think that he's trying to stay relevant and keep attention on mm-hmm. him. I also think that he is a warrior and he is one of the baddest men on the and planet. And he can't admit like that? I think that he heard Joe Rogan say that and his initial reaction was, fuck that, if you put me in a room, he's, I'm coming out, and just ran his mouth. But when the challenge came back his way, he was like, oh. Like, John Jones was like, all right, you want to put these questions to bed? Come see me. He and then responded? All of a sudden, I didn't know we responded. Oh, he <gasps> responded, dude. He goes, if you have a lot of questions that you want to come put him to bed, he's like, come see me. He's like, I'll, I'll put those questions to rest for you. And his tune changed. Him. The next day, Tyson Fury put out a video and he was like, if it's in a boxing ring, he's like, you know, I'll beat you out. He's like, I'm not a cage fighter and changed his whole tune. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that was a little upsetting. That is upsetting, dude. Because you know what? John knows if it's in a boxing ring, he doesn't stand a chance. He said it. He goes, he goes, I'm not going to lie, champ. He's like, in the boxing ring, you're the best guy on the planet. He's like, no one could touch you. He's like, if you come to my sport, though. I'm gonna murder you. Yeah, and fast. and 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 I promise you, a, a locked room is a lot closer to an octagon than it will ever be to a boxing ring. There's no doubt. You know what I mean? There's no doubt. Um, uh, I'm tired 
of it going one way, though, because now it's bothering me. We've seen plenty of UFC guys step foot in that ring. I do want to see a boxer come, but it's we like... We already have. We already know what's going to happen. James Tony. Oh, and James Tony was good. He's amazing. He's yeah. one of the best ever lace up a pair of gloves. But here's the thing. This is why I'm not mad about it, because okay. I, I, I hear what you're getting at. Yes. The thing is, is this. The UFC and MMA fighters are the one talking shit and hitting up the boxers, thinking that they have a chance. It's not going in the other direction. Yeah. They're like, I'll call, like, like Conor McGregor's like, I'll fight Canelo. Go fight Canelo, yeah, dude. Go gonna box die. Canelo. He's going to knock your head clean off your shoulders. You don't stand a chance. So they're coming because, like, the, the boxers know that they can't grapple. They don't have jujitsu. They don't have those skills. But the MMA guys, they fight with their hands, too. So they think they so got they, it. They think that it's like, oh, like, I'm a badass. Like, I got hands, too. I could do this shit, blah, blah, blah. And they don't understand the differences of the sport. So they're hitting the boxers up, coming over, getting smashed. It's not going the other direction. Why is it? Why are people so delirious, though, dude? Like, even if, well, I, I guess. I get we, why. We, I understand yeah, why. We talked about this when you said Canelo, he had to see a therapist and all that. You just think you're unbeatable because you've worked so hard to become that. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's um, like, just because you got hands in MMA does not mean you know how to box. No, it's a whole, it's a whole different, different ball sport. game. Yeah, man. It's night and day. Um, what do you call it, though? And it's funny because Joe Rogan, he says exactly the truth. There was no getting around and stuff like that. And it's Tyson Fury comes out and he's like, he's like, you little fucking bullheaded midget. I'm a behemoth. You, and he, There's not a man alive. You put me in a room and he's coming out first. He goes, there's not a man born from his mother's cunt that could beat me. I was like, damn. Yeah. And he and he is, dude. He's like up there with but one of the hardest things on the planet. He could scrap right. though. He's a gypsy bare knuckle boxer. He yeah. can street fight too. Sure. But there's a difference between being able to street fight and being able to box and knowing jujitsu and high level wrestling yeah. and all that shit, man. It's a different ball game. It just is. And John Jones is the best that ever did it. Um, I want him and him to do uh like Mike Perry's. I want them to do the bare knuckle boxes when they both are <laughs> retired and like ready to go. Platinum they have Mike. nothing going on. I want them to do a bare knuckle heavyweight championship. What Mike Perry? No. Uh Tyson Fury. Perry. No, T- Tyson Fury and John Jones. Oh, that would be amazing. Wouldn't that be awesome, dude? Yeah, just to see. Yeah, do you would. think um uh it, like, listen, I, I get it. He's not going to learn this shit. And, you know, he's been doing, you know, boxing his whole life. Like, he's not going to learn a new sport, like, out of nowhere. But I'm saying, how long does he last in a in a regulated ring? Like, I get the room. John Jones does anything he can to What come do you mean out. in a regulated ring? I mean, like, with a referee going and, 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 you know, there's some rules, not crazy. How long does he last with John Jones? I know he doesn't come what out rules? on top. Um... I don't know, like no eye gouging and, you know. That's already Yeah, like street wrestling. Gotcha, that's what I'm saying. If John Jones can use jiu-jitsu and wrestling, it doesn't what, matter. What, what's, the, what's the bare knuckle rules? Well, bare knuckle is the same as Queensberry boxing. Oh, so they can't kick? No. No, it's the same. It's boxing without gloves. Well, then he's got it's that. It's the same rules. Yeah, then Tyson's Tyson got Barry that. Tyson will bludgeon him within an inch of his life if it's just bare knuckle boxing. That's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, he'll kill him. And why is Mike Perry so good at that sport? Because he's a Neanderthal. I he's love got that him. caveman I love blood, him, dude. dude. I love that also, kid. Mike Perry has adamantium fists yeah dude he hits hard as shit with those bare knuckles he never breaks his hands no there's something weird never. about that guy yeah. man. he's he's different and he's not the most technically sound fighter but he walks through punches he hits hard as shit he doesn't get tired dude he's built for bare knuckle yeah. boxing there, there's something that guy is ridiculous there's something really likable about him yeah. too he has that weird star factor where you oh, he's like great him. dude he's I such a platinum. train wreck and you love it he's the you know best I mean? platinum mike perry's a character dude yeah. he's dope yeah He's fun to watch. Do you know who introduced him to the blonde Barbie? The You remember he was coming out to the ring? With his girlfriend. Yeah, do you know who introduced no. him? John Jones. She she was hanging out with John Jones and a couple of friends. And she, I guess he was real wild and real nuts. And uh, he grabs Mike Perry's hand and he grabs her hand and he puts them together. And, and they were it. like in love. And they were Matchmaker. Like, They're not together anymore. Of course not. <laughs> Neither is Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? These things uh, tend Mike, to die. Uh, Michael know? Perry. Yeah, man. Um, I know that dude got physical. You know it. Florida. Oh, there's a good chance. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? All right, man. Uh, you remember Fetty Wap? The dude with the <laughs> eye. Yes. You know, dude. Um, so he got sentenced today for to six years for uh, selling drugs, illegal narcotics. He caught a charge, whatever. You know, what I mean, but it's like, honestly, man, I remember that dude. You could not walk into a grocery store, a club, a bar without hearing him everywhere. What happened to him? He just fell off. Bizarre. Yeah. Like it's crazy. These guys like they never save their money or like invest dude, or they yeah. have no idea what dude, to do yeah. with it. It's so it's tragic. It, it's like it's like you run it's like the 
You make this crazy amount of money that you've never even thought of before. You're a millionaire overnight. You're this young kid with millions and millions of dollars. And now to now you, now all you got to do is like put a nest egg away. That's it. And go have fun. Dude, this is all you do. And you could watch. All right. So the movie The Gambler. I John, swear to John God, Goodman I was just has that it, monologue. Just thinking it, yep. Every word that he says in there is exactly what you should do. Mm-hmm. You buy your house. You buy a Jap economy shitbox car that'll last a million years. You pay it off. You put Honda it in the system at two to five percent to pay your taxes. Mm-hmm. That's your base. The exact speech. He's exactly right. Because here's the thing: if your house is paid off and your car is paid off and you have money in the system making interest for you, yeah. you could live off the interest payments alone. But also, you could always like pick up a part time job and have spending money. Yeah. But your main expenses are always covered if you You're own done. those things. You're good. So you You're need the living. bare minimum. You could beg your taxes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You, the bare minimum just to make it. Yeah. And that's what you do. You have to have it paid off, man. You don't want to have an estate. You don't have something that, that takes a lot of maintenance or you need a staff to maintain. None of that shit, man. Buy a buy a buy a three thousand square foot house, cash. Dude, when we make What's our the money, problem, man? aren't you so glad that like I'm not gonna go out and like buy a chain? Yeah, I am glad. Like, dude, honestly, please don't do. I mean, do whatever you no, want. It's no, your money. No, but of course not. Just but, don't. Um, but I just think that the worst thing that people get is is jewelry. I've never understood jewelry. But the only good I, thing about jewelry is there's a resale factor. But you're never gonna okay, get as much as you Okay, but you're never gonna do it. it you know what I mean? You it's know, pointless. What? And 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 then and then okay, so you buy the jewelry and there's a resale factor. And then it's like it's like okay, first of all, shit has to hit the fan first. And now you're already in a bad spot. And now you're out there hawking, you know, Rolexes and stuff. When in the in the beginning, you should have just not have bought them. You know what I mean? Here's the weird thing about like famous people that are rich and then become broke. They're in this like purgatory between being truly poor and being rich at the same time because when you have celebrity it opens doors yeah you get into places Free people things, give you stuff uh-huh. they buy yeah so you could be completely bankrupt and destitute but still live much better than someone who actually works yeah it's bizarre you're like poor and rich at the same time yeah it's, and, it's and, strange dude it's and, very strange and they'll send you things like um like pots and pan sets mm-hmm. and that might not see that but it might not seem well, like much but it's an expense to this now point, you don't have to buy pots and pans dude to this point me and johnny were talking about this yesterday yeah um we work in the casino business he's still a dealer and a pit boss he's a pit boss now and all that but he was telling me that one of the ceos is it a ceo, CEO. the one that has the housing yeah, so one of the CEOs, this guy probably makes somewhere in the neighborhood of two fifty to five hundred thousand dollars a year, okay. which is way more than anyone beautiful. needs. Yeah, and he also gets corporate housing, so he has a free, beautiful penthouse that he doesn't pay a dime for. On top of making what he makes, can you imagine that shit? We're down there making forty to sixty grand a year on average. Yeah, we have to pay every single bill that comes our way. This guy makes more money than he can even spend, and he has free housing, and not just free housing, like a penthouse, dude. It's so crazy. I'm guessing it's, it's all crazy, getting put man. away. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All of it is disposable income. Oh. Yeah, man. Just getting blown like, yeah. like, like the end of that. What was that movie? <laughs> what movie? <laughs> what movie? A what porno? Uh, no, at the end where they're all just like blowing each other. Are you talking pants. about the food? No, it's a movie, dude. Ah, shit. Forget it. I, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Fuck, what movie was that? Oh, no, because now I got it. And everybody just blowing everybody. Yeah, they're having like a sex orgy party at the top of the, the penthouse at the end of the movie. It's fucking crazy, Not Wolf dude. of Wall Street because that no, was the dude, gay No, no, orgy. it's older. It's older. Okay. It's older. And not um, not the food grocery store one where they're was all having Eyes Wide orgy. Shut? Oh, yeah. Yes, dude. Where yes. Tom Cruise is just walking through. <laughs> Hong. Yeah. Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know, it's so funny, dude. <laughs> dude, you know what's so funny? How embarrassing would it have been? You're standing around all those masks and you interrupted their words. Like, some, some dude's like, hey, something's going on. And some dude's like, I haven't came yet. <laughs> and he's like, I don't give a shit. Get in the, get in the, get in the uh, what is that called? Like the big room? Yeah, the panic room. <laughs> yeah, get in there. So he's now he's like, he's got a goat head on. He's like, where's my fucking mask? So he like puts his mask on and he's like, all of a sudden he has to throw that cape on. <laughs> so he walks over there and, and the dude's like sitting there and he's like, what is our password? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, Beethoven. And he's like, yes, that's the house password. What is the secret password? And there's no expression to the mask. And he's just sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, how embarrassing, dude. How embarrassing, God. dude. Good Lord, oh, man. Gold. Um, uh, so Stanley Kubrick, obviously, and and he was like ridiculous. Uh, the underage girl uh, to the Russian guy that was selling the shop. Remember, he went in, gave him a hundred dollars, and gave him an extra hundred dollars so he could rent the suit. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, 
when he went back the following day, he didn't press charges. He sold his daughter, uh, obviously his daughter's body to those Japanese businessmen. Like, right. So everything has a price, right? You know right. I mean? Obviously, he's waking him up in the middle of the night and just renting suits and stuff. You know what I mean? Well, she runs up and she whispers something in his ear. And it's some weird thing that has to do with Kubrick. Like, you know, th- th- it means really? nothing. It, dude, it means nothing. Like, 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 but if you turn the, the subtitles on, like turn the, turn it all the way up. So you can read the text. You can hear what she says, but it means nothing. And it, and it's just some weird thing with Kubrick. That's you know bizarre. what I mean? He's a weird guy, man. He's he must a weird be. Guy. I mean, look at the yeah. movies he makes. Yeah. And like all the stuff he changed in the shining and stuff. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. But, um, the world needs more Kubrick movies, but I think oh, he's man. dead he's now. Great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like when somebody's so noticeable that you're like, oh, that's a Tarantino movie. That, that's a Kubrick movie. Can you movie. imagine when Tarantino's gone and like Christopher Nolan's gone and uh-huh. Scorsese's gone? Who's coming up? There's no one out there to replace these guys. Nobody. Um, our saving grace is the dude who did uh, redid Justice League. Uh, Zack oh Snyder. Oh my God, Zack Snyder he, he's rules, wonderful. man! I love Zack Snyder. Um, Ari Aster, dude. Me, Crayon was giving props to Bo is Afraid. Really? But then again, look at his crazy video. So he probably loved it. You I don't know, know what I mean? that is. Me, Crayon, yeah. yeah. You know the cartoons where he talks with a real deep voice, you know what I mean? All right, that's so weird. But um, he was giving it credit, and I'm like, dude, don't, don't, don't defend this movie. Don't, the movie then he that might you do consider another to be the worst movie ever made. It's the worst ever movie made. ever made. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, I'm telling you right now, even like, even stupid movies that have like a one star and they're meant to, and you know they're bad, they have a beginning, oh, middle, and end. Can I ask you real fast? This is completely off topic. Please. But, so the other night, I was just high and I'm watching movies in my room and yeah. I threw on the 2021, I think was the year, Mortal Kombat. Oh, Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah, dude, it's so good, This movie dude. is one of the best... It's like it's like it's like bad and amazing and comical and terrifying and fucked up and all the same time. Nostalgic and it's amazing how yep. good that movie. That I was smiling ear to ear. The I literally stayed up to watch it. I sat up in bed. And I'm like, this is phenomenal. I yeah, was, a lot of honestly, a lot of member berries when they in there. fight when they fight the lizard monster mm-hmm. and then Kano rips his fucking heart out mm-hmm. to stop him at the end. Dude, it's so good. It's a cla- it's a throwback. It's a throwback movie. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Highly entertaining. Please watch that movie, man. I was smiling. The dialogue is ridiculous and, and amazing and atrocious all at the same time. It's so yeah, good, dude. But you loved it. Yeah, every amazing. second of it. Yeah. I enjoyed even the every stuff. single moment of that movie. Dude, because that's what you expect from a movie like that. I was yeah. so happy. It wasn't they killed de- it. it wasn't depressing. <laughs> Luke Kang was it like a heroin addict. Kano was my favorite, man. He just, Kano's always my he favorite. He talked shit through the whole movie. He was just a complete degenerate yes. piece of garbage. Even in the the original Mortal Kombat in like 1995 or whatever, Kano was... A, you know what's funny? I didn't like Kano in the game because he looked too normal. Likewise. Because it's like, okay, there's all these cool ninjas in there. As you grow up, you're like, wait a minute. This dude is a brutal rapist Australian assassin with an eye that that gives you the perfect shot. Yes. Kano's dope. Kano's dope. Kano's dope. Kano rules. It has a boomerang that would kill somebody and just, whap, he's dope. They he's even dope. had they had the fatalities and all that. They yeah. even delivered that the lines. Great. At one point, he's like, Kung flawless Lao. victory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. amazing. So the best where he fucking he slashes that guy and then freezes his blood and stabs him. Dope, oh, dude. So Dope. Good. Does his backflip. His, yes. his, yeah, it was so good, They made man. Sub-Zero OP as fuck in that movie, though, man. He was wrecking everybody. Even Scorpion, when he comes back from hell to fight Sub-Zero again, yeah. they still had to team up to beat him. <laughs> yeah, you know... I didn't know that he was the most powerful one. I, I didn't realize that. I thought he was like Ken and Ryu and like Street Fighter, like they were equals. Oh, yeah, yeah. But apparently Sub-Zero was doper. Wait, hold on. Sub-Zero is the most powerful person? In, Mortal Co- in that movie... I thought it was Liu Kang. No, in the movie, well, obviously there was like Raiden. Uh, yeah, I saw the rival. Raiden, Raiden um, and like, yeah. There was like the god level dudes like okay, Shang yeah. Tsung. But then right beneath that, Sub-Zero mopped everybody up, dude. He wrecked everybody. Um, I remember watching that original. I was like, it's like, um, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> dude, <laughs> you're standing in your living room just punching stuff. Yeah. As a little kid. You're wearing your feety pajamas <laughs> yes. when you're like six years old. Wrapping <laughs> your shirt <laughs> around your face so you're a ninja dude. You jump oh, off the couch God. and like kick the couch pillow. Trying to do the, the <laughs> sitting on your ass. I was fat as a kid. So sitting on my ass doing the bicycle kick. I used yeah. to try to do the Luke King yeah, dude. You, <laughs> you try to get so three good, off before man. you hit the floor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you actually jumped? Oh yeah! Oh, you're a madman. Oh yeah, dude. man. I would have yeah, broke. We, I, I would have ended up. <laughs> we had like a pillow bed on the floor. We would jump off the couch and do that. 
No, <laughs> dude, I, dude, I was too heavy. I would have ended up in one of those little kid wheelchairs. <laughs> you know, when they're like neon green You're and have paralyzed from yeah, the neck down. Have stickers on them of like flames and stuff. It would have been real sad. Dude, dude, honestly, they do everything they can to make those look fun for kids. There is literally nothing more depressing to look at than a child than a child's wheelchair. It's dude. unacceptable. It's unacceptable, dude. <laughs> Seriously. Carry that little fucker around for the next few years, dude. Just till he gets too heavy. <laughs> He's getting shoulder rides for the rest of his life from me, dude. I'm not gonna wheel him yeah. around. Yeah. So messed up. <laughs> you call you start you start getting a nickname piggyback. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got sweat marks because of his legs everywhere you're going. No, nah, man, there's nothing more depressing than seeing that, man. Dude, honestly, um, have you ever been like bitching about like your situation and then you see some little boy walk by like 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 um I was dropping my daughter off at school. This one she was going to Red Rocks, like ghetto, ghetto, like horrible. I she can't was imagine the, where she this was, is going. But yeah, no, 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 Tasha. She was the only white kid in school, and then there was this little Mexican boy uh, um, that had third degree burns all over his body. He didn't have eyelids. He didn't have hair. He didn't. He was third degree burns all over his body. And I remember thinking, and he was running around laughing. Right, I didn't mean to make it mushy, but I remember thinking in my head, that dude is taking life and running with it <laughs> and I'm bitching about my job I'm bitching about bills and I'm like dude are you kidding me dude like you know it's just it's just you you look at this little dude and you see strength I, I don't know yes yes I don't know though I, I really have to think about it because it's like you have to like summon that internal strength when you're of in course. that situation. Also, you're I treated pain very subjective. differently. Yes. Just for having a good attitude, you're getting high fives and pats on the back constantly. I think it's worse. What about just when be, the teachers ain't around? Dude, I just think it's Come worse on. to just be completely normal where you're just a ghost in society and no one even recognizes that you exist. At least when you walk into the room as a third degree burn victim, like you're very noticeable. Dude, you're tripping. People treat you. Dude, people smile dude, at you extra. Dude, you get extra dude, good special. It's not attention. a new hat. It's not a new. It's, it's not a new. It's red better than hat a new hat. No, it's twice as good as a new hat. No one, no, no one is extra nice to you because you got a new hat. Homie, you're, dude, Bruh. you're walking around. You're walking around with lizard skin, okay? Listen, that shit is tough. If you're walking around- And it, kids are mean. It's not good for dating. And yeah, high school might be a little bit rough or whatever. Yeah. But in life in general, if you're smiling and you're that burnt person, you're just like, you're like the beacon of hope for a lot of people. People are just patting you on the back, giving you free shit. Everyone opens the door for you. You get the best parking spaces. I don't <laughs> no know, one's gonna, No one's gonna- <laughs> Dude, honestly, I meant- I, no one's gonna not defer to you if I you're would that ju- person. I would just rather have lips. <laughs> you know what I mean, dude? I'm telling you. I'm telling you that you can't. You can't take that. Listen, you're it's like right. a different version you're of right. celebrity. There's there's gonna be people that are going out of their way to give a happy moment to this kid. Yes. I got you, dude. But I promise you, when the lights come down and 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 it's quiet and you're in your living room and shit like that, dude, and you you're looking at normal people on TV or what you consider normal. <laughs> ew, dude. I'm telling you, man. When he does something, you go, "Well done." Oh. <laughs> Medium rare. <laughs> Would it be just bad? <laughs> oh my god! This is getting fucking dark. <laughs> well done. He just starts crying. Ah, oh, dude, that's so bad, dude. Um, did you have any friends like that with any like major issues? Oh, we all did. My buddy Jimmy, uh, he fell in a fireplace when he was a kid, and his ear was burned, and his and his chin went all the way down. Okay, and um, and his hand, his hand, his like fingers like melted into his hand and stuff like that. Um, yeah. he took the other route. He took the. He went I, bitter. I will kill you he if got you bitter. say anything about my face. I will kill you. I watch. I watched him beat up a lot of people, and he was also like cornbread. He was the only kid with like hor- like like next to Brinley. Uh, you knew right, right where his house was because his horses would have their heads over the wall because yeah. he had like horses on anabolic steroids and stuff like that. By the way, I loved him. He died. He was in Peru, but he went up flipping a thing. But um, uh, he was an absolute animal and um, sure and you know what's funny it's like you don't even notice the scars after a while dude his brother one time all right th- uh, listen i know i'm going right it's a crazy no episode. no no please okay uh his brother one time his brother uh, the, again these are old school kids remember how awful people were back i was then? just i have a story dude, to, to yeah. follow this up so, yeah yes um we're all sitting there and we're all smoking meth and uh his brother his brother's girl mm-hmm. comes in 
with the phone bill. And again, this is before cell phones and everything. And he was calling all sorts of 900 numbers, <laughs> beating be off and whacking off on the phone and stuff like that. So they start fighting. And then he steps up. His hands are to, all sticky. Yeah. Well, he steps up to his big brother, Chris. And he like gets in his face. And Chris knows that Jimmy could win at this point, right? So he's like, so they're like, you know, going off. He's like, motherfucker. And it was getting bad. And we're like, we're all sitting there like, whoa, and fellas, chill out. Fellas, chill out. So Jimmy sits back down. And dude, there's like five dudes in his living room, right? <laughs> And I oh, and I thought like a day prior, like I can't even tell Jamie has scars anymore, right? His brother comes out with a bottle of foundation, and he goes, "Get your makeup out of my bathroom," Ooh. and he tosses it in his lip. Oh, uh, blows up his spot. And I remember, dude, and I remember watching him push himself off the couch and I remember seeing the table it was a glass table I remember it flipping it didn't break but it like flipped and I remember Jimmy launching himself and I remember his brother <laughs> a grown man turning around to run in the room said, no! and, and and they were they 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 wind up like getting into it so bad that cops got called neighbors like you know sure. we're out sitting there on meth the cops are all asking this question we're like God, I don't know you know what I mean it was so bad but want I, some yeah, want some <laughs> but I remember when that foundation went Landed on his chest and landed on his lap, uh, and he and he died. And then uh, like a year later, listen, this is just real life, right? That's what we tell. Yeah. A year later, if Chris wasn't that bad, if it wasn't bad enough, he took Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's girlfriend, who once offered me a cigarette to take my virginity. Oh my but god! I, I, me and Jimmy, like I was real tight with Jimmy. I love Jimmy. I just thought she was bad, but I was like, I didn't know how bad because we were kids. You don't, sure. You don't, you don't like measure. Sure. That. He, uh, uh, Chris took her over to smoke dope with the neighbors because I told you, man, I, all I knew was hillbillies back then. Took her to smoke dope with the neighbors. He brought her over there and her, uh, him, the brother, and all the neighbors ran a train on her all night. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm, dude, I'm serious as a heart attack. Could you imagine your brother? You got, I don't have a brother. Oh my God. Like, I like, 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 my, I love my sister. I would do any, my <laughs> sister would do anything for me and she's fucking nuts. If your brother did that to you, like, 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 literally, like, not only like, let's say you just had sex with her, like, I that'd be bad imagine enough, that, but dude. like, bro, brought her into the to, to the snake pit, and That's they all cold. ran a train on her. That's cold. That's dark. Yeah, yeah. That, that, dude, I remember hearing wow. that. I remember seeing Jane, and I and I remember we were doing so much dope at that time, and I remember I was thinking, dude, like. You know, like he had to go steal from his mom's purse to get it, right? Yeah. Like his dad was a trucker, so he, they they made lots and lots of money. But his mom would have the money; she'd be out on whatever sleeping pill that day, he'd sneak in her room. We'd, we'd be all standing in her room while he's robbing her purse. She's just <laughs> out like a light, can't even hear us. There's just a bunch of teenagers just sitting in a room. Just, it was careless, you know. And I remember <laughs> we were doing like a lot like that week. And I remember I was like, dude, I was like so high out of my gourd. And I'm and and then I realized. I'm going through it with him. Right. He's doing enough drugs to kill himself. Ooh. And I'm just, re you know, I'm like behind him picking up, ooh, a cookie, ooh, cookie. I'm just behind him oh just God. being there. Like, I mean, like, I mean, it's good to be with somebody because honestly, I, well, I think, sure, I think that still. fool might have been like, especially on the dope, I think that fool would have been mad suicidal at the point. But um, I thought that was the most evil thing I ever heard. As, even as a kid. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, your brother, the one that tier. we we talked to, that you love, that you've bragged about before. You he bragged about his brother. He would always tell people Why how dope his brother is. that? Because they... Were evil, just scumbags. Yeah, I, wow. Jimmy was not a good person. I can't but follow we, that. We were friends, you know what I mean? It was, it was bad. No, no, no. You gotta follow that because I feel creepy now. So <laughs> my story, story, my friend's name was also Jimmy. Okay, he had heart problems when he was a kid, so yeah. he had to get open heart surgery. So at one point, they had to open him up from like his collarbone all the way down to his abdomen and like crack him open. Like our technology was not as good back then. I got you. Yeah. So he had this break giant, that chest plate. Yeah. Yeah. So he had this giant scar, but you know how like scars like cords, so they're raised. Yeah. So he had this giant like scar across his chest and <laughs> we, we called him dick on chest. Oh, it's cheap. Like a dick. <laughs> all, we, no! all we called him was dick on chest every day for years and years. We would just call him dick on chest. <laughs> That's I, how I, cruel we were back then, yeah. and he thought it was funny. Like he dude, would laugh with us. He was a good sport. Dude, that's how you guys. That made him cool as shit too. By the way, yeah, we yeah. like where's Dick on chest? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and another note: don't name your child Jimmy. <laughs> that's just gonna be problems. Jimmy's don't do well. Jimmy's don't do well. Not nope. listen. Maybe James, nope. but then they could become a Jimmy. Nope. Yeah, dude, that's bad news, baby. Man. Yeah, jeez, Louise. Yeah, good times. Okay, um, I got another one for us, buddy, that I wanted us to go over. I wanted to ask your opinion on this. What can it be? What can it be? Okay. I like doing this with the screen. Um, now, listen, listen, we, we get it. Like, uh, 
uh, Bud Light made a mistake. Like if you want to wrap that up, you know, Bud Light made a mistake. But I guess uh, I guess people are saw how effective boycotts are, you know, because this is the first time, dude. Honestly, it's been a long time since like <laughs> the 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 that side got one. You know? Yes. Um, Target is hemorrhaging money right now. There's a huge boycott across uh, Target because of the pride stuff. And, so what's going on with it? Well, so they hired some Satanist um, uh, fashion. Uh, maker, whatever, fashionista, fashionista whatever. Fa- designer. Yeah, they sure. hired some satanic designer for the new kids brand, and I think that was like the final. Like, like, what do you mean when you say satanic? I mean, like, um, they introduced his new line, and people looked up the name, and he's a satanist, literally. Yes, he's a satanist. So he had like, he, and he, and he would have like, like, uh, Jesus is polite to pronoun, or I mean, uh, Satan's polite to pronouns and stuff like that. And basically, it's like. People are like, wait a minute. So like, this is the guy that are going to be designing shirts for young children and stuff like. That. People are just sick with the kid stuff, and I and I don't. A hundred percent. They're just done. If, if we could all rally around one point, it should be that. Yeah. At the very least, dude, we'll fight with each other later. But let's let's get the kids square away. I, I I hate to sound like the Reverend from The Simpsons, but it's like <laughs> think of the children. But it's like honestly, nobody does anymore. Yeah. They the uh, kids are seeing too much and being exposed to way it's too much. It's disgusting. You hand your your five year old a cell phone that could get on x videos right now also it's like all of life is hard and you're gonna steal the childhood the one yeah. time where you're actually happy without all this crap on your mind that unfiltered happiness Dude, come think, on. think of when you were a come kid on. and you would laugh with your friends you didn't even know this yeah. shit existed yeah you were just truly happy yeah yeah you get a string cheese it's like the best day of your <laughs> like, life pizza rolls yeah yeah, yeah man yeah <laughs> <laughs> somebody described pizza rolls uh, or somebody described ska music. Like they're like, how would you describe ska music? And they're like, when a kid comes home from soccer practice and sees pizza rolls in the freezer. <laughs> 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 Stupid, right? But um, so Target's hemorrhaging money. They're in all alert mode and stuff like that because people are, I mean, people are just done. So they, <laughs> they're they smart though. Target, I'll give Target this. Target. So yeah, I mean, they're smart, dude. They, they're, they, they, they were on it, dude. They knew exactly what to do. So what they did was, Right. Instead of instead of pissing one side or the other off, what they did is they took all the pride stuff because it's, it's Juneteenth, baby. <laughs> ah, they took all the pride stuff and they moved it into like the boonies of the store, like where you find like like you know like uh, like laundry baskets and shit, <laughs> oh right? God. Like they moved it all the way back there, and um and before the left could say anything, and before the right could congratulate them, yeah. They jumped on and did a mass employee email and they said, listen, our pride collection, we've been getting a lot of death threats against employees. For what? For for having the pride collection. Okay. So we want to put it in a little more designated area. So now it's like, hey, we're not getting rid of it. And now they could look at the uh, Republicans and go, hey, we're getting rid of it basically. Right. You know what I so mean? So they're playing both they're sides. They're playing the fence and it's, bravo, shit, I'll give it to them. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. that's not the worst tactic, really. I, I don't like what I'm seeing though. People are going into targets. Like there's this theme to go into targets and like out the stuff and then yell at the employees. It's like, dude, think of it. Think of you being at your job. Just don't and buy some, it. Yeah. And some <laughs> douchebag comes in. Take asking your kids around it. When your kid asks a question about it, like it's nothing. Yeah. Just dismiss it, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, for real. I work at Target, dude. Like, leave me alone. Leave I got me enough alone. shit going on. You yeah. think I want to go and fight with Target employees? Yeah. That's what I want to do with my day? Yeah. I'll just shop somewhere else. I'll I find have, a way. Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't way. hung the markdown stickers for trail mixing. I'm going through this <laughs> shit right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. And it's like, dude, it's like, the, the, we're... That... This is the most is becoming them. It's the most embarrassing generation of people ever. that has ever existed. Do you know in what the they call the people from the 40s? No. They call them the greatest generation ever. Fair. A time of a time of real man, a time of uh innovation, invention, mm-hmm. uh, uh um uh, uh kindness and family and mm-hmm. everything like that. True and, values. Uh, and I listen, I don't know how that whole uh saying goes, but it's like hard men create good times. Oh, the, good the, times the Joe create. Rogan. Yeah. I don't know how it goes, but it, I don't think he coined that, but I think I, I think it might be like Faulkner or something like that, but um, I don't I don't know how it exactly goes, but it isn't it? Hard men wait. Hard times create hard men. Hard men create good times. Good, good times, times create soft men. Soft men create hard times. Baby, come on. I uh. used it for our movie preview, so I watched it like eight hundred and twelve times. Your tongue is like <laughs> sliding down a razor blade into a pool of alcohol, baby. Woo! It's smooth. Woo! Oh, with the burn Let's at go. the end, baby. Speaking of alcohol, it's a Mountain Dew Code Red, Nick. <laughs> 
Sure it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, code red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, uh, I mean, there you go, man. Another one's up. Our skit's going to be about this. Uh, oh, we we're going to do a sketch soon, guys. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're yeah. excited about it. Also, we have some upgrades coming your way. We're going to have going. horses. Yeah, there's They'll never know what it's guessing. There's going to be horses. Gonna be horses. It's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Oh ben, don't God. worry, Ben Affleck's not coming, but we're going <laughs> to have horses here. This is great. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? See this He's just riding his giant cock <laughs> like, a, like a broom horse. <laughs> like over the moon. <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny, dude. And then he flies past the moon and he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness, man. Um, oh, fuck. Tina Turner's dead, buddy. She sure is. Yeah. So in the end, natural. R.I.P. Yeah. No, no. I K E. <laughs> right. That was nice. Beautiful, right? That was fast. Hey, come on, baby. That, that was, was fast. Nice. Uh, I K E. She lived in Switzerland. She lived in Zurich. She got she got out while the game was good, huh? Good for her. She was rolling, 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 rolling. She was a tremendous talent, dude. Tremendous indeed. Did you see her muscles? That was like the first woman bodybuilder that I no, like noticed. Like like I that was the first woman that I looked at. Like, dude, why is she really? so muscular? Yeah, you I know never noticed it, no. dude. Yeah, Thunderdome. Um, welcome to the Thunderdome, motherfucker. Bitch. Yeah, um, she was in Mad Max, exactly. Um, and I think she got in great shape for that role. And then she went on and did some type of late night TV. It might have been like one of Carson's last years or something like that. Um, and dude, she's like comes out with that dress that's like really like flimsy stuff, and she's muscular. <laughs> oh, she was muscular dope. with that weird blonde hair, dude. You know what I mean? And um, two guys, two guys, two black men that. America, uh, that white media took down in this world. And let me tell you who Joe Jackson and Ike Turner, that is two guys that brought the world talent. And, and because they were hard men, they got the worst, they got the worst rap that I've ever heard, dude, ever. Seriously. Really? Yes. I don't know anything about this. You've never <clears throat> seen what's love got to do with it. I just know Lawrence that. Fishburne? No, no, man. Never seen it. Okay, all right. I got two for you. Okay? I just know that so, Ike was was a rough dude, <laughs> and he used to beat the shit out of her a lot. I mean, Ike was an old school dude from the south. I mean, I listen. I, I sometimes listen, you have to give him a little slap. A little slap. A little <laughs> shoe. The old Sean Connery. A little shoe across the mouth. <laughs> um. So uh, here's the thing. Joe Jackson spanked his kids. Joe Jackson had the the Jackson Five. One of the the most amazing talented groups that ever came out of music yep. okay i'm talking not just michael and then what and then and then this byproduct of the jackson 5 who was born with music in his soul became the biggest thing ever we were just talking about him earlier in the day right ike turner listen like like tina turner they did this movie where I, lawrence fishman was like the biggest piece of shit that ever walked through it was ike turner right um she would have been living i'm not even joking she lived in like some mud house and then she moved in down south with her with her family, and they went out one night to some club, and they met Ike, and he turned her into a superstar. That's why she lives in Zurich. That's why she was born in, like, Mississippi, no and shit. now she was skiing in Zurich before she passed away, okay? I don't look at Ike like, you know, look, I, listen, was he an abusive prick? Maybe, but I mean, she should, Maybe. Be, she should be thanking every day she ever knew him, every single day. Every day she should so be So he like that. beat her to greatest. No, well, he first he took her and then they got together. Yeah. And then Ali Mae. And then he uh <laughs> and then he would I guess he would whip her ass in front of friends and stuff like pretty bad. This I sounds guess, awful. I guess like I listen, I'm not <laughs> At least she got paid, I guess, but still That's what I'm trying to say. I I can promise you this, dude. If you would walk up to her and you'd say, Tina, before her, listen, 82 years old, like, listen, Tina, you're about to die next year. I'm a genie. I could snap my fingers right now. You could go back now, maybe for the time, right? But I could, but, 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 but she still live it all again. You could go back and you could never meet Ike Turner and you could live your life however that would have turned out. Or you go back again and you can meet Ike Turner and everything be the same and you, and you end up the same. She's going to go, Ike. Maybe. Ike. Yeah. That, no, that would actually be a very interesting question to have asked her. Dude, and they, they and Joe Jackson spanked Michael with a belt, and the uh, the Jacksons, the American Dream, they painted him, honestly, like the biggest monster that ever lived, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But wasn't he? No. <laughs> He, dude, if my dad pushed me one percent of the way that he like saw talent in those kids, no, he's a good dad that made his kids work. 
I thought they used it. to beat the shit out of them no. and like throw them in the in the in the, the fireplace and, and shit. Nick, and Nick, let me tell you something. I don't know. All right, we were, we were just discussing this. Okay, um, what do people love to tell you about their how hard they had it? Right, always. Okay, especially guys well off as the Jacksons, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How bad do you think it really was, dude? Honestly. I can't imagine. I don't think it was bad at all. I think I think he was mean, and I think and and I when did they have time? What was he? When was he kicking the shit out of him? When they were doing world tours? Dude, that's a good question, dude. No. I don't know. Actually, I, I don't what, know. When, I don't know. You're making some good points, but it's like common knowledge that it was brutal or whatever. I'm just so it's it's like hard to dismiss it. I, look, but you might be right, dude. I'm telling you, I'm right. These were two guys <laughs> that it's easy to, they needed a bad guy for these movies. Cause, cause it's always like, you know, they, they, they so overcome they the adversity and everything. Yes. Yeah. Dude. It's like, it's like, it's like, okay. Before, cause this one might be the cancel, cancel big time. Okay. Before <laughs> I say this, I just want you to know it wasn't uncommon when i was growing up that dudes smacked their old lady like i grew up no in that, that was pretty normal yeah i i grew up in and, and I hate to say it was I, normal i grew up in a house like that mm -hmm. and and my oh, georgie. yeah oh, oh georgie georgie porgie <laughs> i fell down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> it's gold. So I'm just saying, it's like you got this old school dude with old school values, and they want to do Tina Turner's life, and they're like, "Okay, tell us what happened to you. Like, like tell us like what went on in your life." And she's like, "Okay, I was a star. I came from nothing. How was Ike? Well, I guess you know he was he got a little rough sometimes, but um, but Ike was good, and I and I and I thank God for my career and meeting him. Got him. Got she him. Says that. Huh? She said that? No, I'm saying that when they were writing the movie. Oh. The movie would have been boring if it was just Tina oh, Turner. Oh, I see. I see. Girl from, girl from uh, They're Mississippi. like, this won't sell. Yes. This won't sell. Do you feel me? Mm -hmm. They need a bad guy. There has to be a villain in these movies. And they took Ike Turner, who produced her and, and, and gave her everything that she ever wanted to become a big star and stuff like that. And you take the Jackson, Joe Jackson. You think Mama Jackson would have made the Jackson 5? No. Are you shitting me? So, so it's like, dude, it's like... Put some respect on these guys, man. For real. I'm sorry. Like, it's, none of this would have existed yes. without these abusive cocksuckers. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Dude, uh, you, you ever see Trophy Kids? You ever seen that documentary? No. Uh, Ronda Rousey's mom was like, like a trophy mom, like, like you better win. You do everything. Some people, she'd be in the gym at like three in the morning. Or, and if she messed, she missed or made up or something like that. She'd have to run an extra two miles or something like that. People call that abuse. I call that a dedicated parent. Fair I'm weird enough. like that. I'm weird like Fair that. enough. You know? That's like a Roy Jones Jr.'s dad. Roy Jones Jr.'s dad was like yeah. super brutal yeah. to him and like and like put him in there with like heavy weights. And, and like, I bet he thank God, he's thanks the best God for every ever walked, day that he ever. Yeah, I bet he thanks every through. single they don't, day. They don't talk. Yeah, so you, you they feel don't me? Talk. Okay, well, you but know he what? loves him. He's like he's like we're just like two strong headed guys. We yeah. don't talk. Like, but he understands. Uh, how about this? How about this? <clears throat> And I bet you Senior was probably like, hey, listen, you know what's funny? I was going to ask his name and I'm like, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, it's Roy Senior. Okay, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> That's I, all it is. I was, uh, um, I was thinking, it's like, I bet in his mind, he's like, he can hate me. But he's the greatest that ever lived. Probably. And there you go. Probably. And that's all I wanted for him. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. It's like I would love to do a deep dive on that and find out the truth about these people. Yeah. That'd be fun. Like sometimes, dude, it's like you, 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 your kids grow up and they got problems, stuff like that. And the first thing you ask is like, did I hold him too much? Did I not hold him enough? Right. Did I did, did should I have pushed him? Should I have not pushed him? Did I push too hard? It's like you ask these questions, stuff like that. When you're a brutal like want everything good for your kid, like Asian dads, mm -hmm. like you know, like, well, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, look at Asian them. and Indian dads. Yeah. I, well, Asian American and, and and Indian American dads, like because those are the kids that succeed and stuff like that. There's still plenty of pieces of shit dads back in India and China oh yeah, and shit like sure, that. yeah. Only the best come sure. here to like go to university. You know what I mean? But that's all I'm saying. I'm I'm just saying it's like it's like I remember watching that and and I remember her meeting him in the club and her being head over heels and stuff like that. And they're famous and they got all sorts of money and. Bam! And gives her one, right? Pow! Right in the kisser. Pow! Right in the kisser. You know Bang, what I mean? Zoom. And and he wanted her, you know. And uh, here's how it went down: she was talking or something like that, and, and really annoying him. And he hit her. And the truth is, is don't annoy him. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> That's the I truth. I swear to God, I'm just joking. I swear to God, I'm just joking about that last bit. How about a little bit of silence? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Would it kill you to shut up? Oh, I thought you meant you wanted to do a 30 second silent for Tina Turner. No. You know? No. I loved Ike's hair. He had the he had, he had a uh, a wig and he would do you know the bowl cut? Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, do I? Homie, flat all the way across. 
He's gangster. He's gangster. He's <laughs> I gotta look up a picture. It's funny because it's like you watch this guy come out in this bedazzled, sparkling suit, and this fool will throw you up against the wall and funk the shit Shook out of you. He's like, you. man, yeah. Shook not you um, up. I, the realest thing that I ever heard the game say, you know how I told you I like the game from Compton? Yeah. Am I talking too of much? Course. No, 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 you're okay. good. Please. The, the, one of the greatest things that I ever heard the game say, he's like, you know, it's like people think about Los Angeles. And he's like in the in the eighties and nineties, and he's like, and they think like 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 you know rags and like gangbang throwing up signs and low riders and stuff like that. He's like, dude, he's like these people will be over at my house Friday night with cut off shirts, see through with their nipples going what? doing the electric slide in the living room. Don't mean they're not gangsters. No, but still, it's just it's like you couldn't even imagine that other exactly. side. Exactly, you That's know what crazy. I mean. And then, and then, and then and then the next day they'd be at the park doing meetings in the park and stuff like that, banging, shooting, doing drive bys and stuff like that. Huh. But it's like, dude, it's like everybody likes colors. Everybody likes to dress up and go dancing sometimes. Right. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're still people. Prince Entourage. Yeah. The Prince Entourage. The Prince Entourage. Oh, you'd be the shirts, we'd be the blouses. <laughs> shirts against the blouses. Yeah. Game. Oh my God, that was blouses. so funny. Bitches. Blouses. Bitches. <laughs> maybe you should take a, a, a trip to Lake Minnetonka, or maybe you should, what did he say? I forgot. Say it. Purify yourselves in the waters of Lake Oh, yeah, yeah dude, yeah. <laughs> Purify yourselves in the in waters of Lake Jima. Minnetonka. <laughs> oh, that was so funny, dude. Gold. That was too funny, man. What else we got? We want to bring Johnny up? Uh, yes. Johnny boy. Introducing to the show for the third time, Johnny Tsunami's Tsunami. coming up. Tsunami! We went on our camping trip. We did some magic mushrooms. Johnny's got some things to say about it. I support his message, and so I will give the floor to him. Here you go, sir. Headphones. Good to see you. Hello. Sorry that my ears are all fucking warm. <laughs> Good to see you. Hello. Mine are hot too. Is that like a, a family? Is that a physical <laughs> thing when you take those? What a tsunami, buddy. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yeah, see man. You. Uh Johnny's Johnny's no doubt third chair in this house, dude. We love this guy like crazy. That's all there is to it. The Irish family stays together. That's what we are. We're growing, baby. That's it, dude. Mm-hmm. We ride together, we die. <laughs> we ride together, we die. Just start hitting with that 2000 <laughs> hip hop stuff. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so this is what I wanted to ask you. I wanted you to take me kind of through the trip. Like, all right, I know you guys get shrooms. You guys get shrooms every time you go out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And on your way up there, so so you guys are like, like, what's the plan? Don't you guys get there late at night, sleep, so you could spend the whole day and night there? <sighs> Yeah, oh, yeah, we do that. I mean, it's just uh, it's just escaping from reality. I mean, we obviously live in Las Vegas, so I mean, yeah. we're very in tune with their, all of city life, society, phone, all that stuff. I yeah. mean, our, our big thing is is like getting away from society and doing it. And like this whole big thing with mushrooms, everybody's like, oh, I'm not sure about it. But mushrooms, you take it in the right settings. I mean, it is an incredible release. And it helps you out so much psychologically. I mean, that that that's my thing. They want me to do. I'm a psychopath. I have all sorts of anxiety, depression. I, listen, I got I got it running through me. And they and they tell me all the time that there's healing process like like properties with the with the mushrooms. And it kind of like put your head in space. Listen, man, I've tried so many different pills that I'm like. Why not to mushrooms? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you can't, yeah. And eventually they're going to regulate it. They have to. I mean, like, it's like, I don't know the basis behind it. I only know my personal experience behind it. You know, same with Nick. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, we do. We fight through it. You know what I mean? We fight through everyday life, but we go out. You know, it's come down to a, a, a I don't know how to explain it. It's just a primal something, especially in the day and age we live in. You know what I mean? We're yeah. so caught up with fucking everything. It's just, it brings us, it brings us a back to a state of correction. You yeah. Know what I mean, you know what I mean? Almost like hits the reset button it's, it's, it's on you. Yeah. Button, you know, like, and that's, that's how I feel about it. You know what I mean? It's like, I can go into more depths. I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 it's I okay. Must, I still might be on mushrooms right now. No, 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 <laughs> You're, no, but can I say something? You're doing a good job. Okay. Okay. So you get there, right? And what time did, cause you told me that time basically said stuff. So you we, dropped around eight. We dropped around eight o'clock. Yes. We okay. And now being in like a wood set, like, okay. Uh, surroundings. surroundings. It means a lot, right? Yes. Like, like your environment that you're doing this. Like, yeah. like you guys are in the woods and stuff like that. I mean, is there some type of like weird connection to nature they, they, and the mushrooms? Yeah, like, like weird. do you connect the two? Especially being in a city environment, and then you go up into that. And yeah, I mean, like you know, your 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 mind is put in a different mindset. You know what I mean? So, and you breathe a little bit better and stuff like that. Yeah. You breathe a little better and being with the right people. Yes. I mean, it's incredible. It is an incredible experience. Okay. So here's how this goes. I want you to take me through the whole thing. Okay. So you eat them. 
You eat them. And you immediately get acid reflux? Because oh, you were no, telling no, me like no, your no, belly started no, hurting, no, right? No, that's from the whiskey. From the oh whiskey. my <laughs> goodness. Oh, like, no wonder why. I'm like, dude, they really give you acid reflux? Like, what are you eating them in fucking no, ragu sauce? That's a, that's a whiskey. Yeah. That's a whiskey from the night before, yes. Yeah, no, okay. No, no, so if no. you didn't drink the night before, maybe it not, yeah, wouldn't have been so bad. Okay, okay. It's so bad, yeah. Because it has to come back up. There you go. Yeah. Acid reflux. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being in my 40s now. Who knows? I don't know. Shit sticks around. It just does. It just does. Okay. So, all right. So you eat these, right? And now, now obviously, there's no turning back from there. Uh, All systems go, right? Is it about like... Now, I know it's different for Nick. I know. So are we looking about a 20 minutes till you're full blowing... Tripping balls for me, for me yes. For or does it kind of ease into for, it? For me, it's about uh, fifteen minutes. Nick's like Nick's like an hour and a half. Yeah. I like you, yeah. You're an hour and a half. He's like an hour and a half. Yeah, like, like, like it. Is it like, tolerance? It's because he just, does him right. I don't know. Yeah, it's just I, I, I mean I don't think it's tolerance. I just think it's the way his mind works and body you know work, I mean? right? So that's got to be a it's physical a, thing mind, too. Mind yeah, body. it's it's it's, uh, it's it's more. It's definitely you know psychological. You know what I mean? So everybody everybody reacts different to something. You know what I mean? Like when he comes in, he comes in hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? When it happens, when it, when it happens, but. It's like with him and his girl Jenny, you know what I mean? Like we're like we're like there like instantly and like yeah. he's just seeing us. You know Let me I mean? ask you a question. Because he starts tripping so later, does that mean that when you guys are kind of done with it, he's still going? No, we're still like we're, is there like a time, you know what I mean? No, we're, we're still we're, like does it lapse? We're, Oh, uh, I mean, so you're probably taking him in the car and then heading up there. We're still, we're, we're still going. And like when Nick was getting into it and like, I thought I was coming out of it. It's like when it got more intense, cause I was more in team, more in key with Nick. You yeah. know what I mean, like he was feeling it and then I thought I was coming down. I mean, like it's, it's something psychological that I can't explain. You just have to experience for yourself. You yeah. Know what I mean, but I mean, like, I'm not going to deny the overall healing properties that it has, especially if you fucking suffer from anxiety and depression. Dude, that's and me. I'm anxiety. telling you. Like, you tell me the, all the time. Like, dude, you got to do this. And, you got to do it's this. It's real. It's something that, you know, like I can explain or tell you all the time, but until you actually do it yourself, you know what I mean? You, you yeah. know what I think I'm a product of? I think I'm a product of, I bought into the bullshit of like, you know, the anti-drug campaigns, like, like you could have a bad trip. You could do something stupid. You could, it, it's soul crushing. It could do this. It could do that and stuff like that. Instead of just like throwing your hands up and going, well, just do it. Who cares? Try, Let's go. Try, yeah. Try. I, I, I need to like talk about reset. I need to reset my opinion on it because I don't have a bad opinion. Listen, I, I want to do it, but it's like, I'm so afraid of being stuck. stuck it's, it's the stuck. It's, it's the, it's the, Okay. Now I'm like in a bad like like mind trip, which I don't, which I hate. Which I was in this before, so right, it's like right, okay, right, great. Right, now right. it's like enhanced by a million, and I'm watching weird things floating by and stuff like that. Right. But now, like all the only way you know past this is through it. You know right, what I mean? It, yeah. But maybe I should take that and run with it. You just run with and it. Go, and go and go through like, it. And just be like, you know, like if you tell yourself you have the psychological strength to go through it, and you know what, that's what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Before Nick and I, like our last trip, like a month ago, I mean, like it was a ha-has for like five hours, like completely. I mean, it was like little kid shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this next time it was like, we got hammered, man. We got hit hard and it wasn't all good, but we made it through it and we made that, made that trip and we made it, we made it good because we knew it was fucking hard. Like we're heavy hitters. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get how Nick, you want to help me out with this? That's exactly what it was. No, you're, trust me, you're That's doing exactly good. I swear to God, you're murdering this. Um, out of curiosity, right? Um, all right. If I ha- ask you to do some like task, like uh, like um, all right, you're tripping, you're full on tripping, right? And we need firewood, and we got the axe and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey Johnny, I'm putting up things. You're full on tripping. I'm like, can you cut firewood? Do you have any issues doing like a task? What? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like does it like like if like if I do weed, I might do something really stupid and like oh, you know, I forget well, I mean, this you and can do that. Still that but I mean, but you're also you're also in the you're like the middle of the night, man. You're like obviously like oh, so you guys get everything you, ready you to, you, and then it's time to party. It's like everything's okay. Everything's prepped. Everything's prepped. You do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Before you do that, you know what I mean. You're also straddling tripping and reality. Like you can tune in and out. Yeah. 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 I could just get up and start doing regular shit and just be normal, and then I sit down and start tripping again. Yeah. So you can like you can choose on like what to focus on so when you sit so when you sit still that's kind of when it starts getting back to you is that kind of like you know yeah. if, you're, if you're moving around and doing something does it kind of take away you can focus on i mean task and it won't destroy. yeah okay you okay i mean but you know other people around you they're going through it you can you can tune into their energy which you cannot do sober so to speak yeah you know what i mean 
Because we're, because, because, dude, literally everything on this planet is made up of yeah, energy. energy so we gotta share some with humans, yeah. especially. That's why it's like, dude, ha, have you ever been the the sober driver, um, and and you're sitting there and everybody's drunk, and, and and you're just having the worst time, and you're like, you know, I can't, you know, I'm doing this. I'm never completely sober, so these guys can drink and stuff. I wasn't good at that, but um, but it's like, but but it's like, you know, you get into the. You get into, you know, um, they're like, like you tune into them. Like to, if you just start smacking shots 20 minutes later, you're going to have this wonderful time. You know what I mean? Just like, and you know, just like anything, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like when you're, when you're all doing the same drug and stuff like that, it's almost like share this. I'm tripping on this. Look at this. I'm is that, can you like well, literally, I mean, can look, you like transfer it to somebody? Like, like, look, like drinking, drinking's different. Smoking's different. Yeah. Mushrooms are, mushrooms are just in a league of their own, you know what I mean? It's so just, it's really like nothing else. Yes, it, is, it is absolutely nothing like else. It's, it's like hard to even nothing, nothing, nothing's ever going to be the same with it. That's what makes it so fucking important. Yeah. And it, it's so mainstream. Uh, my daughter's in middle school and she was like, yeah, kids do shrooms all the time. And I'm like, there's eighth graders doing shrooms and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there acting like a pussy. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, like I mean, it just like bothered me. Well, I mean, you know what eighth I mean? Graders, I mean, when you're in eighth grade, I mean, your mind's not fully developed yet. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's yeah, like, the ones that the whack jobs, <laughs> those are the ones that end up messed up the rest of their lives and shit. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'd rather enjoy it. Like, you know, now than back then, you know, and so she could like really appreciate everything that's going on. Cause I think when you're young, you can't look at some beautiful tree and like really like Appreciate assess it. the beauty of it and like what it's been through and how long it's been there and stuff like that. When you're a kid, you're like, it's a trait, you know, and just move by. Yeah. So it's like, how much fun could you possibly yeah. be having? Like if you're not like dissecting everything, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I'll go out in the middle of the woods right now and hug a tree. Man. Yeah, so. man. Um, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I could tell you this dude, uh, uh, like I'm not some weird environmentalist, but I don't want to, I don't want to see this entire world become some giant, huge city. I want, I want Thanos to come down, snap them fingers. You know, I gotta. I don't. I don't want like one more than the other. But I, I want. Agree, I agree with you one hundred percent, man. Yeah, we need to reorder the balance for of real. Everything. For real, dude. And you, you know, and it's like you always hear that. You always hear we hear that weird thing. It's like, it's like, oh, you know, when I'm flying over this country, I just see empty, you know, circles and squares, circles and squares, crops. It's like, well, what do you think's feeding those giant cities? You know what I mean? So it's like, no, you can't build houses over that. That's why That's why the cities, they're all building up, you know? This valley, dude, this valley alone, the house we're sitting in right now is desert when I got to this city. And this thing expanded so much in every single direction. We are literally, we, there's an issue. This dude walked outside the other day, there was a coyote just staring him in the face. Right? Isn't that <laughs> fucking, nuts? Fucking on the wall, yeah. It was fucking wild. That's crazy, man. <laughs> it was so, wild. So it's like, it's, it's like, dude, eventually, I, and, and maybe, who knows, it's like, I, I, you know, I don't know the intel or whatever, but it's like, eventually things are going to get out of control. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, I'd hug a tree too. I don't care. I, 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 I like nature. You know what I mean? <laughs> To get you out there, that's a the thing. Um, and it's funny because I was asking him, I'm like, yeah, like I hate sleeping outside, like I hate being cold and having nothing to do about it. And they're like, dude, we're not gonna let it go. It's, I guess they bring out air it's, mattresses, it sucks, man. I'm not cowboy gonna lie. coffee, I'm not gonna lie, man. It gets fucking cold. Does it get freezing? Oh, I'll bring an extra blanket, dude. I will, I still have to, go. I have to go because I promise I'd go. There's no doubt, I have to go. But, um, okay, all right, so now, all right, so you can do tasks, you can kind of snap in and out of it and stuff like that, all right. Uh, this particular trip. If it's not too, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if you want to share it, what did, what's the first thing? Like, like what's something like big that happened during the trip? What happened big to me? I was like, Nick, sorry. I just, I just laid down prone. Like I was fucking flat by the fireplace and I was like looking up and we're in, in the mountains at, at uh, Charleston. And like, there was pitch black It's pitch black, man. Okay. I'm looking up aside from the fire. But I mean, like I was below that. Yeah. I was below that. I'm looking up and like, they're doing night ops. The military was doing night Oh night yeah, ops. dude, you guys told me about that. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 it just so happened. These guys so are all like, tripping out. So I'm like, so I, I hear, I hear this, I hear this plane in the background. Right. So yeah. I hear the plane and like instantly after the plane is like, these flashing fucking lights. I'm like, I'm like, almost thinking they're drones. I'm like, man, am I, am I really this fucked up? Like right now? I'm like, no, I'm like, Nick, do you see that? He's like, yeah, I fucking see it. I see it. I mean, like if it would have happened just one time, then I'm in like, maybe, okay. It was just my fucking yeah. plane tricks. I mean, but it happened three times after that. It was like a plane, 
That that and then it was those fucking probe lights just like fucking flashing. Yeah, fucking Nick started. said they were taking pictures and how they I'm do like, it, they like stretch them across like so many feet so you could like get a like a lay of the land. You know what'd be really funny, dude? Let me let me tell you something. You guys, your minds would break in half if they flew the helicopter close to you, right? Like military grade, you know, helicopter, and they get on the loudspeaker and they got lasers pointing down and you hear everything surrounded, and they go, they go, um, we know you're down there. And you and Johnny are sitting there looking at each other like, like, whoa, we didn't do anything wrong. And Jenny turns into a werewolf and she fucking just takes off running. <laughs> and you see like the agents coming down and driving through and stuff like that. Imagine being in this room trying to like, like make sense of all this. Not that like, not that like your, your basic common sense goes away, but you'd be tripping, right? Like would it like that heighten everything? And Jenny just starts running through... <laughs> You're just running through the hills like this cra- yeah, crazy werewolf. Oh, how fucked up my head is, man. I would have loved it. Dude. Oh, dude, I would have loved it, dude. Dude, I would have just stripped myself fucking naked, man. You know, like, just, just naked chasing after everybody. <laughs> oh, that's too funny, man. I'm like, let's go, Frankie. But you We're know what, it. dude? Dude, you're, you're absolutely, isn't it cool when crazy stuff like just goes down out of nowhere you know what i mean yeah, like you know I, everybody yeah. likes that, that was man. wild man it was wild i mean like those that plane going overhead i mean like that wasn't my fucking head man like yeah it happened three times after that i'm like there's no way it was like it <laughs> did was, you think it was just a flash of light at first like that's in my like, head no man like i'm like look at that man and, like you hear the fucking you hear the plane you hear the plane was up there and then whatever it was was fucking falling it was fucking just like blinking blinking, yeah. blinking. it was like I don't, I don't know how to explain it but they were they were fucking there man it was not an imagination I swear to God. Yeah, I mean Las Vegas, we we got the base down there, so we see weird stuff in the sky all the all time. time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I remember I saw some weird flame just falling towards there. I mean, who knows? It could it could have been a meteor or something like that. But I remember they were doing like one of the test ones, like where they fly, like kind of like bam, bam, bam. And I remember I see this weird flame like falling towards the earth, yeah, yeah, burned yeah, out, yeah. done. Yeah. It's like what did you just yeah, shoot? A, what did you just do? It's just technology that we don't know about. Man. Yeah, I mean, like it's out there, it's real. You know we I mean? we were talking about that earlier, like um like uh animals, you know, bats, you know, with sonar. You know, they they literally use sonar and um and uh how like like it's just something natural like naturally in them, you know. Us, we have to like, you know, kinda like build machines and stuff like that. Isn't that incredible that that we could do like we built night vision. We can see in the dark now. We we built thermal. We can see what who's alive and but you know, body heat and stuff like that. We could we could build some thermal gun. Like on have you ever seen Captain Phillips? And you just see these three long, lanky Ethiopian or uh, uh, Somalian bodies, and you see this like short, fat Boston guy, and you see the outlines of them, and boop, 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 and they just pick them off one by one, dude. And and Captain Phillips in there, what's happening? So we're envious over a flying mouse. Yeah, yeah, really, dude. Oh, that's too good, man. No, but um, yeah, man. So you're tripping out, and and then how long? Now you told me that. At one point, you looked at your watch because you thought you're sit- you basically thought you were sitting out there yeah, all night, yeah, right? Like twelve hours, yeah, and it was like it was only like three hours in, <laughs> yeah. And how much longer do you drip for? I don't know, it was probably a good two hours after that. I so mean, a good like, five, I, four, four to I five mean, we hours, looked the, right? We looked, at the, looked at the watch, and that, that's when Nick was going through his deepest, and that's when I went back into it, you know. And you I'm guys there. all respect each other's like like space and oh, stuff yeah, with the breath. Oh, like yeah. You're going to be quiet. You're going to be quiet. They're yeah, going to be yeah, talking. You're you're, yeah. Talking, yeah. There's, there's no bad trip, man. There's no bad trip. Cause that's the thing. Like I'm so talkative that when I go silent, it gets weird and I don't want it to be that. Cause I'm dude, I'm, I'm going to be doing something that I don't do. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be in my head kind of like registering it's this all, and making all, this all, work. It's all yeah. part of the experience, man. And like, we all, we all understand that, man. And we, I just want you guys we, to think we, like, we, no, we, dude we, about the snap. No, we appreciate, no, we appreciate, <laughs> we appreciate where you're going Get up through, with a man. Uzi. What is this dude doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, that, that's, that's it. Like, yeah, man, I, I want a nice, you guys, I trust. I want to, when I do it, I, I want that environment. I want to be outside. Cause it, you know what? I think, I think when you do stuff like that and you're not, close to home and you're in the woods and stuff like that. It's exciting to try different things and stuff, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely do. Especially when it comes to stuff like that, doing when it, 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 it refreshes and renews the mind yeah. is the best way I can express it. When but do you I mean, really appreciate but, it? Like but, the but, next I mean, day, like, like just thinking of everything but, but you thought you have, of, but you, yeah. have to, you have to do the it the whole time. You have to do it in the right setting and you have to do it with people you trust. Okay. You know what I mean, yeah. You know? 
And they, they've been trying to get me to do this for a minute, and, I, and I'm giving in. I, I, I have to. I got to try this. I got to try this. I, I didn't, I, you know what? When you guys offered the Molly to go up there and do that for the camping, sure, it'd be fun, but that's not like the, that's not like the, the usual. No, you know I mean, what I mean? It's chemical drug. Yeah. You know? More pills. Like, I, like, yeah, I got yeah. known for my I mean, like, don't pills. Get me, don't get me wrong, man. That'd be fun as fuck. Which, sure. Which but I'm I want, sure, I want that. I'm sure we're probably going to do. Yeah, yeah. Know? Oh, God. <laughs> Come here. Put those on camera, Nick. Oh, Look God, at these babies. Dude, look how fucking beef these are, man. Yeah, oh, dude. oh, my goodness, man. Dude, a, oh, look, it looks, it looks like I'm eating them. You go, oh, just Mr. Pack. That's going to save the world right there yeah right, eventually For real. you know <laughs> you know what man honestly as much stuff as they're feeding into everybody with all the you know the zoloft and xanax yeah, and that, it's, yeah. it's like dude, it's just it's, a kind of like crazy. a different you know, alternative no, 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 i've been on all those kinds of medication sure man, you know what i mean yeah and like you know I mean, it's just coming, i start to lose a piece of does, myself it, it with that like it's like you know it's like uh being on it especially zoloft i've been on it before it's like, yeah you know and like and it makes you a fucking zombie or like mm-hmm. fucking you know it's like or i've had hurtful feeling i'm like i miss feeling sad. yes you know i mean yeah it's crazy, it's crazy. dude it's yeah like, how could you how could you you know possibly miss a sad feeling but when you're on a chemical drug like that you yeah actually like say to yourself i fucking miss that dude i miss feeling sad i mean it's crazy when your heart gets ripped in half whether to do a breakup or a family member passing right, right, or anything right. anything like, like that no matter what dude no matter how bad it hurts it's like i'm alive I'm baby alive. I'm, I'm alive, alive. I'm a, I'm a, i'd rather feel fucking sad yeah. than nothing at all you know yeah what I mean? i'm human baby and it's here i'm skin i i got flesh and bone and i and that's it and that's what's going yeah. on man and you know and that's why we're saying this stuff because there's a lot of people out there that are surely going to watch the show that can relate yeah okay and that's the important thing, and that's why we're here doing this. Well, we want I mean? everybody to just kind of get more positive yeah, these days yeah, on the yeah, movies yeah, and yeah, the the, like the news and everything. Just, Everything's so grim. Just be, just be human. Just be who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Good, bad, indifferent. Nobody fucking cares. Just be your fucking self. They said, like, the biggest sign of the times for, um, for like, how you, pe- things were viewed. They said Seinfeld, like, New York Seinfeld, right? It was, like, they were getting robbed and mugged and it was scary to walk down the street and there was all sorts of like, you know, homeless so when, guys when and doing, doing the it. show when they were doing the show. Yeah, yeah, like 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 the the, the optics of Seinfeld. Uh, right, like right. it was a rough city, it was mean, it was dirty. You know, like they the, a couple episodes they, somebody pulled a gun on him. They got robbed in the park like like there was all sorts of crates up cops really? and stuff really? like. Yeah, wow. like 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 they did it under you know, the guys of humor, but right. there was a lot of crazy stuff. In it. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward to when like, you know, people started getting happy yeah. and it was a good time. Friends came along. It's like oh. central perk. Everybody's yeah, in a yeah, great yeah, mood. Yeah. Everybody's like laughing and high fiving like, and stuff like, like that. It's like, how are you, how are you going to afford a fucking Manhattan apartment working at fucking the central, fucking central perk. perk. <laughs> Howard Stern said through every, he said he watched, sat down with Beth and he watched every season and there was not one black guy in central perk. We're talking about New York city, right? By the way, it was filmed in LA but still not one black guy in Central Perk in every single season there was not even like a there was not even like coffee drinker number two just in the background be the white fucking the black fucking Melvin maybe yeah he's fucking at him, man. dude that's it they're like uh, hey get to wardrobe and uh, uh, straighten out your hair just a little bit <laughs> dude. it's so fucking true man. yes dude ridiculous. they're like can you iron it out thinking, you know what I mean oh so shit funny. Dude, awesome. for real, man. Oh, that's too Good. funny, dude. That's great. But uh, Johnny, man. Okay, so the the trip, because you guys always come back. Every time you guys come back from the mountains, you're like, dude, you got to go. Yeah, you you got to go. You have, have to. Have I mean, to. We, we always talk about you, Billy, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I mean, me, Nick, especially Jenny, you know, like, fuck yeah. it, we need Billy here, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we need you, man. That mean, yeah. that means something to me, you guys. I, I mean? love you guys. You yeah. don't know, man. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and I got to do it. I, I have, have to, I have, have to go. To. We're building this Irish spaghetti family and we got to do this, right? Yes. yes. It has to happen. It might, it might hurt, but it, it'll, it'll, it'll be good in the long run. We promise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we promise. Right. So I'm we hitting would, the reset. We, 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 we would never do you wrong. Man. Yeah, you man. Know? Okay. Okay. Be, just know that we're being punished with you. What's happening? <laughs> 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 All right, man. That sounds good. That right, sounds brother. good, Love dude. You, Come here, That's brother. Right. Johnny Tsunami, baby. Good to see you guys. Nikki Pringles, come on in, buddy. Nikki Pringles coming back to close us out, baby. We did a good show. <laughs> Nikki Pringles TikTok that <laughs> boy laugh. <laughs> Dude, a million. Listen, go do it on TikTok. You get a million subscribers overnight. Easy. 
<laughs> That's such garbage. U K S I and that chick I told her. Dude, dude, who could laugh like that, dude? Nobody. Nobody. It's just nobody. Not a, it's just not a natural Fuckin thing that comes from nobody. in you. You know what I mean? Uh, Zero people. KSI with the... Um, oh! It's, it's like, bizarre. What? No! With his odd-shaped head. Dude, it's so bad, man. <laughs> what is with that? Is that like a... Like Let me scoot a, in. Let me scoot in. Is that like All the right. missing link type deal? Like a, something like a, weird. You dude. said that he doesn't have that same swag when he doesn't have his headband nah, on. Dude, <laughs> once that once that bald head on and he does it, it's like he, he's it's got like, Tim Pool syndrome. Dude, for real, hey, uh, Quagmire. Quagmire. Remember when Quagmire? They found out he had a wig and he took no. it off, and he was like one of those guys that scratches his wrist because he's nervous. No, <laughs> that's gold. That's the literally vibe you get off him. But it's like it's like this uber confidence guy, and he's walk, dude, and it's like he's not even wearing a hat. His head is so gigantically bald that he doesn't need, like Tim Pool's like, all right, I got the beanie. Tim yeah. Pool wore the beanie. Uh, uh, he went on another person's show. He wore it in Texas when it was really hot. Like this was like a week ago. Who's that dude that we like? Uh, you show me him. He's great. He was like one of the first people that like talked on the Tate thing. Smart dude, wears business suits and stuff like that. Patrick Bet David. Yes. I love PBT. Yes. Boom, PBT. Baby. Love the guy. PBT is dope. He had Tim Pool on there and Tim Pool's telling you, uh, it was the crazy thing. He was telling you um, how he simple was raised on the streets and stuff like that. Okay. No, and then and then it always felt it always breaks apart. You know, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. Um, yes, he's like, uh, uh, you know, while uh, I was building computers at seven years old, he's like, he's like, and I thought school was stupid. He's like, and since I was out skating on the streets every day and doing this, and then he goes, and then he goes, it was the weirdest thing. He goes, and my mom bought two coffee shops. Like your mom bought two coffee shops. I'm sorry. What was that last your thing mom that you just said? Two coffee shops in Chicago. Nick, you're you're good with numbers. What's yeah. that real estate? Like, how much would that cost? Like, to buy prime real estate in Chicago? Even just to rent it <laughs> is an outrageous yes. amount of money. Yes, we're talking like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month, dude. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, you know it's, what I mean. No way. No freaking way. You know. <laughs> and, and and dude, oh my goodness. So he's sitting there going off on this, and I'm like, dude, I'm like. That's why you hate that guy. I'm telling you. He bothers me, yeah. man. He, on a core level, he just bothers me. And I'm not stupid. I'm aware he's an in, he really is Got an you. intelligent sure. guy. And it's okay he's to give smart him his props. Yeah. It's not that he has no value. It's just it's something about the way that he is on a, and on like a core level bothers me. Yeah. He's a he fucking... Does, dude, he doesn't have to be bashing him to not like him. Is that like... Yes. Isn't that... You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, he just... Why, does, why do people get lost within that? You he's know just what I a, mean? He's just a Melvin, dude. He's yeah. a super Melvin-y nerd... It's just annoying. He's got that smarmy douchebag attitude. I don't like that shit. Yeah. I like cool people. Yeah. I just like, I like Robert Downey Jr.'s. I like Andrew I love Tate's. Robert Downey Jr. I watched Chaplin I like just cool the other people, night. I like cool people, man. Yeah. I don't like weird, nerdy fucking guys. I don't like that whole me, me, me. The closest thing I can get to that is like, I like Lex Friedman, but even him, I have to turn him off after a while. Like, I can only watch so much of his shit. Dude, did Before you I'm see that? Like, oh my God. All right, all right. Tell a joke, dude. Dude, you're, you're absolutely right. And did you see that picture? Because I like Lex too, but it's like, it's like, he had some. It's exhausting. He had some dude on there, and the dude was like cracking jokes, like trying to get in the ball rolling and shit. And he would not. Like and Friedman can talk. Where's the rest yeah, of your personality? Exactly. He could ask great questions. He could ask the questions, the the hard dating questions that you want to know. But the guy was like, kind of like throw a joke, and then Lex would like turn, look, uh, uh, and then go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no so laugh, no laugh. Let no me laugh. let me ask you. This. <laughs> yes, yes. Let me ask you if you were stranded on the moon, and Mars was close by, and the sun was shining, and thirty. Light years away. You, I'm like, dude, you're putting me to sleep dude, with your yes, cadence. Put some yes. energy in your voice, hey, man. Dude, act, that's all. Act that's like you want to be there. That's you know? all I want, man. Um, he took a picture with Ivanka Trump the other night. Uh, gorgeous, right? Dude, and I met Ivanka and she's a lovely lady. Dude, his picture, <laughs> his picture did that. This is his, I swear to God, dude, right? He's at, he's at like the heat game or something like that with Ivanka, right? Like they're, they're box seats, like, like, like ridiculously pricey, probably hanging out with Trump and them killing it, right? He went like this. Go look at the picture on Instagram. This is Lex. Dude, it's exhausting. That and it, it's all the way down to even the way that he dresses or they dress or whatever. Like it's always it's black and white, 
black suit, white shirt, yeah. black tie. Yeah. It's like, dude, can't you like put like a color on and just change it up a little bit? Just show me some have flair. Like just ducks. A, a little charisma. Have ducks That's why on I, his tie for one day. By the way, being dry and bland does not inherently make you smarter or more intellectual. Look at Russell Brand. That's why I love him so much. Intellectual. That guy's a rock star yeah. and he's a genius and he's hilarious yep. and he's got he's got style, pizzazz, panache, if you will. Parties like an animal. He's greatness, man. I like people like that. That's what I like. Even Christopher Hitchens. Yeah. Swag, mm-hmm. style, just a Very way about cool him guy. in general. Yeah. yeah. Clever. Whiskey pithy, in one hand, cigar in the other. Genius. Knocking genius. Everybody's whatever the argument they got, just murdering it. And yeah, he was great. And it really yeah. it just comes down to a matter of style. I'm not hating these people. Like, I don't think they're bad people. It's just their style is not my style. I just don't like being around that that dry, bland, boring horseshit. Yeah. Again, doesn't make you smarter just because you're a nerd and you talk like this. Yeah. Doesn't make you more intellectual or higher IQ. It's a nonsense. And honestly, most of the intellectuals that we have, like Eric Weinstein, Brett Weinstein, even Lex Freeman, who's smart as shit in his mm-hmm. own ways or whatever. Yeah. Even Jordan Peterson, I'll go down to Sam Harris. I'll cross the entire gamut. They're not smart smarter than us because they're always pontificating oh, and intellectualizing. As a matter of fact, when you over-intellectualize, you actually lose your intuition and your intuition is what leads you to the truth. Yeah. Over-intellectualizing, just because you come up with a really detailed, smart concept does not make it accurate or correct. Yeah. It doesn't. It it's just, be, you can have the smartest, most detailed thought on earth and be completely wrong. Yeah. It doesn't make you better. It you, doesn't make you better, man. You don't need facts when you got instinct. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of with that's that. Joe and Nice Guy Eddie, baby. I'm kind of with that. I Remember? don't even know who that is. That's our Reservoir Dogs. Oh yes. When he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. What are you talking about? This piece of shit right here is working with the LAPD. And he goes, Joe, no, he's not. Do you have dude. proof? And he goes, proof. And he looked at Harvey Cattell. You're so mad because it's like, dude, it's like, dude, who do you think I am? I'm, I, I, I'm Joe. He's that's like, my proof. son. He's like, proof. I he's got like, You don't need proof when you got instinct. And your instincts are so usually good. right. And it was right. I would say that right. that's that's one of the primary flaws in these intellectual people, especially someone like a Jordan Peterson, who I'm a huge fan of. Heart of gold, great guy. You know what I mean? He like he really fights for the people, but yeah. he's so overly intellectual in his approach to life, and he's never had like the psychedelic experiences that we were just talking about, and things like this. Yeah. That he's missing a massive part of what it is to be a human being and where inspiration in these things comes from. You're not just better just for you're so intellectual that you're literally missing things. Yeah. You're yeah. not you're not the, seeing everything. The fun you're not stuff the on whole, the way up. Every, yeah. Not even just that. That's part of it too. But I mean, a lot of things that like that you wouldn't have known, like. If you've never done psychedelics, I talk about this all the time. Like one of my heroes is Aldous Huxley. Yeah, Aldous Huxley wrote Brave New World. He's one of the smartest guys that ever lived. He did mescaline, was big on psychedelics, psilocybin, and all that stuff. And because he had those experiences, his his intellectualism was tempered by the intuitive side that also existed in him, and that's what made him so piercingly. Um, what's the word? Almost like prophetic. Yeah, like how he could see the future and understand how things work. Same thing with uh, Terrence McKenna. Super, super brilliant, smart intellectual guy book knowledge for days genius beyond measure a lot of psychedelic experiences had the intuition he was a lot more um, profound than a lot of these guys are Jordan Peterson would do well to do some psychedelics. Yeah. It really yeah. would do him some well. He would do him a lot of good. Because, I mean, look at his face. He's miserable. He's got that furrowed brow. When you do mushrooms, like Johnny was talking about, like with the recalibration, how it resets you, yeah. it shows you more of reality. It reminds you of what's important and what's not. You get dialed into nature. You get dialed into, like, just these, these esoteric, beautiful things, these spiritual things that you can never you tap into for with just your mind alone, day. dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, over a long enough time, so I would say the intellect, being a highly intellectual person, it serves you well as far as like, you know, like being well to do in like your job or your business or maybe being successful. Yeah. Um, you know, you could write good books, do things like this. You know, you have good pontifications, good ideas, but you can't prove any of them. But like when you have that other side with the, with the, with the intuition yeah. and when you tap into like that part of you, if you will, that's when like true inspiration comes out and that's when true breakthroughs are made. Most breakthroughs in all scientific and philosophical history were made from an intuitive point of view, including yeah. like, like even Einstein talks about that. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I'm butchering this because I've been drinking no, no, quite no, a no, bit. No, 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 no. Do you get what I, I'm saying? How about this? How about am, I, this? am I fucking this up? No, no, no. Wait. No. Can, I, can, can, I, can, I wrap it, can I put it in a nutshell? Please. What about this? All right. And you tell me if I'm on, if I'm on the right track. Uh, a guy like Lex Friedman can probably read up on Carnival in Brazil. He could tell you where it started, all the amazing things, all the events and everything, everything that happened, why they do this, why they do that. But nothing's going to be better if, unless he just went out there and partied and went to Carnival and, had experience. and saw those Brazilian girls shaking and their butts and felt and those felt it. and 
felt it. Yes. Right? I got you. Okay. So instead of instead of making everything a book report and just get and just getting the, the, no the soul. gist of it, no yeah, soul. I got you. You need okay. the soul, man. Right? Is that is that a good yeah, way to you know? That's what I mean? a great way to put okay, it. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why it's really it's important. It's kind of like because uh, I'm gonna be honest with Goodwill you. Goodwill hunting. Like, Remember, he's like, he's like, he's like, listen, you you could tell me everything that he felt when he, you know, uh uh when he that was painting was that beautiful line. stand-up. He's like, but you never walked in there and smelt the sixteen chapel. Yes. He's like, you 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 never you never sat down and and looked up and saw that beautiful yes. thing. He's like, you tell me about he's like uh he's like uh you tell me about war, probably quote Shakespeare. He's like, but you don't know what it's like to have your buddy's headline. Yes, yeah. man, mm. exactly. The term visiting hours. By the way, Robin Williams, oh my goodness. People say he was a joke thief, but I thought he was a better dramatic actor than he ever did comedy. I thought he was amazing. Yeah. He was oh, so he was amazing. brilliant, man. Yeah, I loved, loved him. That dude. I loved, loved that, that guy. Dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what should we wrap this up? Wrap that up, baby. Right. We did episode, a good episode. Episode 34. Did we have uh did I we have some like some catches? <laughs> like, did we put anything out there? Tyson Fury. We're gonna, we'll find out. Yeah, we're, gonna make, it doesn't matter. we're gonna yeah. make it no matter what, guys. It's it's not we're gonna, gonna stop. Make it ain't it gonna after matter. All. It ain't gonna matter. We're gonna get there Destiny, all the way to the baby. top. That's Destiny. It. That's it. We were on it. We're on the track. We're on the track. So upgrades coming soon. Sketches coming soon. Mm. More content coming your way. We'll shoot again in a couple of days. Yes, sir. Three, four days, whatever the fuck it is. Yes. Anyways. Always remember, have your conversations, not their conversations. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your community. Let's be people again. Until next time, God bless. Peace. Boom.